It's so stupid, it's positively brilliant. Yep, Charlemagne the God. I'm Andrew Schultz. We are the brilliant idiots. And if you don't uh, listen to this podcast, you're not black. Um, if you're not, if you don't listen to this podcast, you're not black. Wait, wait, did I get it right? Nah. If you no, listen, to, if you to. have trouble deciding between this podcast and another podcast, you're black. <laughs> what? You have trouble deciding between this podcast and another podcast. <laughs> you're black. I don't know. I just want black people to listen to it and white people and Latinos and Asian people, and whoever else Son, decides they want to listen to podcasts. I got the chest everybody. out for the Latinos, bro. Look at that. You're, you're, you're all welcome. Is Taylor actually in the studio with you? Damn, bro. I want to surprise you. <laughs> Cut to the wide, Al. Cut to that wide, Al. First of all, how can I surprise her? You don't even have a wide angle on and I can see half of her. What's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> how much, have have I been exaggerating when I say she's gained a few? Or? <laughs> I have a sweat. She's shirt bleeding into the asshole. frame, and she's bleeding into the frame. <laughs> that freshman fifteen during quarantine is real. <laughs> Yo, Taylor, gang, we got oh, you. She's in the building, guys. I know how much you guys miss right, Taylor. Was everybody's week, man. What did what did we see this week that we thought was uh, positively brilliant? Uh, are fucking idiotic. Well, I I have to commend you. I thought your interview with Joe Biden was uh, positively brilliant. I think we all know what was idiotic, so maybe we start with positively brilliant. Okay. Um, I thought the interview with you and Biden was was absolutely um, it was brilliant. It was just great. You were in your bag. You were doing your thing, and um, uh, that sound bite. I mean, really resonated, you know, when like when my parents that are seven in their 70s are texting me about an interview that you had, I know that it's hitting all generations. Got you. And um, so it's the platforms, though, it's the platforms that like redistribute that kind of content. That's all it is. Like, li like literally in anything that we do, it's just all about, you know, where people see content. Right? Sure. But the content has to be exceptional enough that they'll want to share it or it has to be provocative enough it has to have something that's yeah. going to grab people's attention it's got to be news right like you know that's it's, that was news like that's one of those stories that it made news it wasn't just a viral sensation it was literally headline news it was on the front page of the new york post like, okay so <laughs> like, how do you feel news. about the interview and how do you feel about the reaction to the line um i knew it i mean i knew what the reaction to the line was going to be I knew that. I, knew, I mean, you know, I, 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 like I, I, I pre-taped that the week, the, the day before. So it's like, I've been doing this for a long time. <laughs> you, you know, you know when you got something, baby. You just don't know. You just don't know how what how big it's gonna be. Like, come on, man. What I'm supposed to sit here and lie to y'all? You know when you're sitting on that gold. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know when you're sitting on that platinum. Okay, and then you then you you put a couple of feelers out there. You know, you send it to a few of the homies just to be like, bruh, <laughs> this just slaps. Watch, watch, hey, watch this tomorrow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, matter of fact, I don't say nothing. I just send it to people, and then I get their reaction, and I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. this shit, yeah. Slap. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, it's interesting. The reason it's interesting for me because I can look at it from a bunch of different ways. Like, I'm a person who respects honesty. Okay. So I don't I, if your honesty is potentially dangerous. All right. If your honesty is, you know, loving and caring. All right. Mm -hmm. If your honesty is self-deprecating and revealing and transparent. Cool. I just respect honesty. Right. He said what was honestly on his mind. Right. I don't know what to I don't know what to tell y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, I saw people his, his you know, his team was spinning it as a joke. Um, I saw him on uh CNN yesterday. He was on Dana Bash's show. Taylor, you can play this clip, even though Taylor never plays the clips when we tell her to play the clip. From, from what I read, from what I read on SoundCloud on YouTube. Somebody yeah, said tight. somebody actually said, Is Taylor ever gonna play a clip when they tell her to play a clip? Yeah, I've always wondered that because Al edits the video. So I'm like, when the fuck is Al getting these clips? 
I don't think. Are you getting the clips? <laughs> Taylor, what the fuck are you doing? Huh? Taylor, Taylor really got the best job in the business, huh? We and, just and, tell and, and, and over there risking Corona for it now. For no know. reason. We're the risk. Yeah. We don't know where Taylor's <laughs> been. You were probably in Camden, New Jersey last night. You might have been in Camden. You might have been, been in Camden, New Camden. Jersey, um, wilding out. No. I want to ask you about the remark you made last week on The yeah. Breakfast Club. You said, if you have a problem figuring out whether you're for me or for Trump, you ain't black. Well, first of all, um, you know, I, uh, it was a mistake, number one. And I was smiling when he asked me the question. I was, you know, I, I, I sh shouldn't have been such a wise guy with him. He was being a wise guy, and I responded kind. I shouldn't have done that. It was a mistake. Yeah, I saw, I saw him on Dan Abash, though, and he said he was being a wise guy. No, you, yeah, he said you were being a wise guy. Yeah, he, he said he was being a wise guy because I was being a wise guy. Right. That's what he said. But did you feel like you said something wise before it? I don't remember it, any joke before it. Come on, man. Yeah, yeah, listen. Uh, Y'all been listening to Charlemagne for a long time. If you just want to talk about Breakfast Club, you've been listening to me for 10 years. Y'all know when I'm being a wise guy. Uh huh. Okay. Whatever the fuck that is. What is this, good fellas? Like, yeah. God damn it. Does Joe Biden always have to remind us how old he is? Like, <laughs> like Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> yeah, I, when I saw the thing with Dan Abash, though, I laughed because I was just like, you know, that's 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 classic. Like, he's the vice president, former vice president Joe Biden. He's old. He's white. He's powerful. When you have that level of power, that level of privilege, that level of, of entitlement, and you've had it for so long, everything is everybody else's fault. <laughs> it just is. Everything is everybody else's fault. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Of course, he would blame that on me being a wise guy. You know what I'm saying? Because he's not going to take, you know, he's not going to take any 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 responsibility or accountability for what came out of his mouth. That's right. not what politicians do. Come on, guys. Come on, man. <laughs> like, like, what are we talking about here? Like, are we surprised by that? You know? Right. Now I had to I had to look up the definition of wise guy. And what did it say? It said, uh, um, it said, uh, uh, what did it say? Uh, a smart on. ass. Yeah. Yeah. It was, uh, what was it? Hold on. Did I write it down? Let me see if I wrote it down. All right. Well, while you look that up. Um, oh, yeah. So a person who speaks and behaves as if they know more than others are a member of the mafia. So I don't see how any of those definitions factor into the conversation we were having. But right, you know, but 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 whatever. If you if you think an old, powerful, privileged white politician is going to ever take full responsibility for his fuck ups, then you don't understand how the power of the privileged our politics works. Now, do you think that he was being that he was trying to joke around? Do you think like mm -hmm. in his core mm -hmm. he was trying to like joke around? He felt maybe comfortable enough with you that he could say that as a joke. If it was behind closed doors, do you think maybe he would have said the same thing? I think Joe Biden is, is around a lot of black people who have that same sentiment. Who have right? that same what? Sentiment. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, like have that same sentiment. They look at not necessarily conservatives per se, but specifically Trump supporters. Right. And they look at, you know, they look at black Trump supporters and, you know, you can see how Donald Trump, you know, has marginalized a lot of different communities, how he's oppressed a lot of different communities. So, you know, they question you know, somebody's blackness in regards to voting for Donald Trump, because, you know, that that's the thing. Like, like what is blackness? Right. Blackness is something based off, um, you know, culture. Right. And, and, and if you're black, you're supposed to protect that culture at all times. Right. right? So if you're, you know, uh, supporting something or someone that may not be supporting the culture, then you can be looked at as anti-black. Like I've seen I, I, I've, I've seen that anti-black sentiment with, with Trump supporters. Like right. That's, that's not a, that's not a new thing. So I think I really do think Joe is around. I mean, Vice President Biden is around a lot of different people um, who probably say that so often. Or he probably asked the question. He probably does ask, like, why would a black person ever vote for Donald Trump? Right. Like he probably asked that question in his in his policy meetings. And when he's meeting with, you know, the NAACP and other black organizations, and they probably share that same feeling with him. Right. So he probably was repeating one of the talking points he's heard from his, you know, circle. But some things must remain in the circle. Right. <laughs> you know what I yeah. mean? Some things must remain in the circle. But I see people that agree with what he said. 
So that's the other I think thing. Black people that agree with what he said. Yeah, the other thing that I would say is like, uh, all right. So <clears throat> I saw him say it, and I'm like, oh wow, this is going to be fucking massive. Uh, and then I kind of sat back and I was like, wait a minute, is what he's saying any different than the sentiment that we've seen on Twitter? that we've seen towards guys like Kanye West and other black people who mm -hmm. have, you know, worn the MAGA hat. It kind of seems like, I bet even a lot of our friends have probably tweeted things that are similar to, if you vote Republican, you're a sellout, or Absolutely. if you don't vote Democrat, you're a sellout. So in a lot of ways, he's getting roasted for really supporting the sentiment of a lot of the people who are roasting him. Yeah, I mean, that was the most interesting thing about it when you look, right? It's very interesting to see that an old white man also looks at black people in that way. You know what I'm saying? Like, like the, question of, the question of what makes someone black, you know, that's, that's, that's really a discussion for black people to have. But, you know, and, and white people aren't qualified to have that discussion. But like I said, people do connect blackness to support and protection of black culture. So, you know, when you see a black person for voting for, voting for Trump, and you know Trump is a threat to marginalized people in this country. It it makes you question how much that person, you know, cares about his people. So to see that through the lens of a white person, it kind of reinforced something that I always thought, and it's that white people don't respect sellouts. White people don't respect Uncle Toms. Interesting. White people may fear radicals, and they may not want radicals to say the things that they're saying because it upsets the status quo. Right, right. But I don't think they truly care about people who seem to not care about their own people because how could I ever trust you? Um, how could I ever trust you if you love me more than you love your own people? Right. I so guess that's what I, that, that's what I kind of got <clears throat> now when I heard the Biden thing. It reinforced something I, something I already thought. And it's just white people don't like white people don't like cooning. <laughs> white people don't like Uncle Tom. Yeah. White people don't like sellouts. I don't think anybody likes a sellout, right? Um, I mean, that goes back to Judas, you know. Boom. So it's like, uh, 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 yo, let's, even more recent times, look at the Trump administration. Yeah. Trump didn't like those people that were turning code on him. 100%. 100%. He didn't like those people that were snitching on him. He didn't like those people that were selling him out. Like, right. I know? think. I think if I were to make a devil's advocate argument for black people that are gravitating, white, white devil's advocate, if I was going to make a white devil's advocate, is there any other type of devil? <laughs> uh, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, no, uh, if for black people who have like uh, kind of embraced the Republican, uh, Republican politics, I would say maybe they see uh, a quicker path to progress for black people through conservative values so well, see that's in, what i i, yeah, but, I agree with you but but i don't like to mix the two i think it's a big difference between conservative traditional republican values and what and we're trump seeing values. now in the age of trump that's fair and you understand that nuance i know a lot of people i think a lot of people don't right i think they just kind of you know equate the two and mm -hmm. to be fair you could put some blame on that for the republican party that's been so supportive absolutely uh, very of the very trump complicit. administration right because yep. once you go this is what a republican is well, then that's how you can treat someone, right? If those are the values of a Republican. But Very I true. do think there's a lot of black people out there that they lean conservative on a lot of their values, especially if you're like a religious black person. Maybe you've immigrated to America from a country where these like religious values and like societal values are way similar and way more in line with conservative values than liberal values. So you're like, wait a minute, I kind of... I kind of agree with everything that these conservatives are talking about, yet I'm not supposed to be conservative because I'm black. But then you start going, well, maybe this is the way that we can progress. We could try something different. I understand how a black person could get there. A lot of the black conservative friends that I have who have been black conservatives for a long time, long before they were, you know, uh, there was a Donald Trump. That's what they all say. Right. You know, they all they all feel like, you know, um, conservative values align more with you know, the things that they want to do and they feel like they want to be a part of the conservative system just to see if they can, you know, help progress in the black community. Right. Like, so, you know, I, I can't be mad at them for that. Um, I don't like questioning anybody's blackness uh, based off how they talk, how they walk, what their political views may be, you know, mm -hmm. what their religion may be, because at the end of the day, nobody 
sees any of that when you're just out and about. If you're walking down the street, if a, a racist or a white supremacist sees your black skin, mm. that is what that person is focusing on. He don't give a fuck if you're a Republican. He don't give a fuck if you're a goddamn bird uh, watcher. Uh, a bird watcher, Jewish, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like he doesn't care. He sees a black person. So when you say things like a person isn't black because they do X, Y, and Z, that no, that's very dangerous. Because yeah, you know, I I don't know I don't know what uh you know the brother who got killed in Minneapolis. I don't know what his 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 it's political affiliation was. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't I don't know. You know I don't know what anybody's political affiliation is our religion is neither do these police officers they don't give a shit i think that's a great point man it's like you're still going to get treated a certain way because of the color yep. of your skin regardless of your politics so removing someone's blackness when they still got to go through black shit all the time is super unfair mm -hmm. even if that person doesn't think so meaning even if that person who is black doesn't think they will be treated unfairly because of the color of their skin. We know that that person is tripping and he just ain't met the right white person yet. <laughs> that's, just, that's just all it boils down to. You just, ain't, you just ain't met the right white person to remind you that you are indeed still nigga. So in a way, the red Trump hat is good. It's a calling card. <laughs> Keep going. You know Keep going. It's a calling card. In a way, the, good, the red Trump hat is good. Better rep your set. You know what I'm saying? That might protect you from, uh, you know, some unnecessary harassment at the hands of police officers or, or white supremacists. Yo, would a low hey, key. Would, would, a, would, a man, would a mod Aubrey have gotten harassed if he was jogging with a MAGA hat Son, on? I'm I don't know. Bro, low key, I think you might be right. The safest way that a black man can dress is wearing a MAGA hat. Maybe. You could sag your pants. You could wear whatever the fuck you want. Nobody can say shit if you got a MAGA hat. Maybe. It's quite possible that might ease people's. That is tension. more. That is. Is that provide more safety than a bulletproof vest? <laughs> bulletproof vest signals war. You run through a goddamn white neighborhood with a bulletproof vest on right now. It would be World War goddamn three. But if you run okay. through it with, with a MAGA, MAGA hat, on, hat, you get a lot of head nods and. I see you, MAGA hat. Okay. You know, Amanda Seals got that joke. He's like, I see you, purple dress. I see you, MAGA hat. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, I, who knows, man? I just don't like, um, I don't like questioning somebody's blackness. I don't like, you know, diminishing somebody's blackness based off who they choose to vote for or, you know, it's just, it's just weird. It's just, it's just a weird thing to do. Yeah. It is a weird thing. You guys have a unique relationship with your skin color. I mean, America has made it that way, though, right? Yeah, no, of course it's made it that way. But it is yeah. incredibly unique where it's like you're defined by your skin color, not by your culture, because many of you are not familiar with the culture where you come from. Mm -hmm. And it's this one unifying thing is like this. The one thing that you can all agree on is the mistreatment that you go through because of your skin color. It's fucked. Yeah, but, you know, it's, it's dangerous fucked. with generalizations, though, man, because like, you know, I, I wrote about this in Black Privilege. I talk about how. You know, when I meet uh, new white people, yeah. I don't know whether they friend or foe. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, you know, sometimes you got to disarm me by being extreme and walking up to me and saying, hey, I am not a white devil. <laughs> like, now, and, here's and, the thing. And, and we try do to that. do that. And we try to do it by saying, hey, did you see Blackish last night? And then you get upset. No, no. Then you get upset, that, bro. That's, What's that, the best way? Because that feels like pandering and it feels like um, it feels disingenuous. Yeah. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like approach me. If you're a real ally, say, yo, I am not a white devil. Nah, bro. I can't. I can't support that. I get it a lot. I, I get it a lot. That's I, get, I get white people walk up to me in the bullshit. street. I honestly... But I asked them to do that in my book. I asked them to do that to me to, for me to make me feel comfortable. Yeah, but it's by the way, whack, if bro. That, by the way, whack. if there was a signal, if there was a black signal, right, <laughs> that I could use when I walk into a space yeah. <laughs> to, to let people know, hey, man, I come in peace yeah. like an alien. Take me to your leader. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I would do it. It's called a MAGA hat. Do it. Nah, it ain't just a MAGA hat. But you know what, though? What you said, that's very true, though. Black people have to do things like that. Like, it's certain things, like, me and Wax have gotten on elevators, right, with one white woman. Mm -hmm. True story. Sometimes I'll wait for the next elevator. 
And if I get on and there's no choice, I go out of my way to make that white woman comfortable. I do that with all women, period. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But in particular, that white woman. Yeah. Right. And I, I just do like, you know, there's just certain things, there's just certain ways that you move in order to make people around you comfortable. I think that's an experience that black people have that a lot of other races don't have. I think that's especially as a black man, that's something that we have to do that I think other races may not have to do. I mean, I've had to do it. You know, if I'm hanging around a lot of black people in a neighborhood I'm not usually at, I have to convince them that I'm not an undercover or true, you know, true. something like that. So what I'll do you go do? What do you do? Um, w- would you mind passing the joint? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like a, a toke of that reefer, huh, guys? Yeah. Huh? You, you sound like a fucking undercover cop. <laughs> you sound like goddamn Hoyt from Training Day. <laughs> I smell a fucking pig. All right, <laughs> whose hey mans is this? What, what, whose mans is this? What if it's all dated references too? It's like while we're out here, should we play some hopscotch? That seems like a fun game to play, huh? Hey, hey, is that the block where they sell the narcotics? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Hey, why don't we open up one of these fire hydrants and have a little ghetto pool? (laughs) (laughs) See, that's exactly how you know the FBI is in your neighborhood. The FBI has infiltrated you, okay? (laughs) Oh, what's up, Taylor? Come on, talk to us. You don't think that's sorry? You don't think that's um, frustrating though? That you feel like you have to make someone pacify situation yeah, of like, course it's fucking frustrating that's what america is about america is about frustration <laughs> what y'all, what is, what's up with us man we gotta stop acting like we don't know what america is it's all frustrating everybody in america is frustrated white Yo. black asian <laughs> jewish but- gay transgenders, poor, rich, everybody has some level of frustration. There would be no America without frustration. Yes. It's a frustrating country. It's too much freedom for it not to be frustrating. I would say that it is frustrating, but the things we're frustrated over are different than at many other places in the world. Like, Like here in America, we're frustrated over the idea of, you know, civil rights and the idea of the, you know, the freedom to do as we want and act as we please. And then in other countries, they're frustrated over water. They're like, yeah. where's the water? And not having freedom. Yeah, Actually not being having oppressed freedom. and marginalized, being under dictatorships. But that's what I mean. Yeah. Freedom is frustrating. Yes. Yeah. Because when you have freedom, you realize there's more shit you want. When you don't have freedom, you're like, all right, well, I guess this is what it is. I'm going to tell you what's even more frustrating, the illusion of freedom. Okay. Because there's certain things we see in America that we know should not be happening based on what this country tells us. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So that's even more frustrating when you're looking at this thing called the Constitution. Mm -hmm. At one point, you know, black people were labeled as three fifths of a human in it. And you're you're being treated as such in the 21st century. Mm. That's frustrating. Yeah, a hundred percent. And by the way, it's, it's not just it's frustrating for black people because we have to experience it because we go through it. It keeps happening to us over and over. I can also say that it's frustrating for white folks because, I, you know, contrary to popular belief, I have a lot of white friends and they're frustrated because they don't know what to fucking do. They really don't like they don't know what to do. They don't know how to make this shit stop. You know what I'm saying? They don't know how to use their privilege to combat prejudice. Like they want to make a change because they know that they have the privilege. They know that they have the power. They know that they're in these positions to possibly bring about change. And they absolutely have no idea what to do. Like it's crazy to me when I have white friends who send me things that they want to post on social media because they want me to read it because they don't want it to seem like they're pandering or they don't want it to seem fluffy or they don't want to say, you know, the wrong thing and get backlash for it. Yo, fuck all that. I don't know why we haven't learned that in 2020 moving politically in any way, shape or form is over. Speak your truth, Mm. speak truth to power, worry about your intention. Mm. If your intention truly is as a white person to use your privilege to combat prejudice and you truly are frustrated over what you're seeing, let the spirit move you. Mm. Say what the fuck you need to say. Do what it is you need to do. Everybody has to stop with the whole 
oh, if I say this, I'm, I don't want to upset this person. Or I don't want to, you know, have the Twitter mob on me. Or yada, yada, yada. Fuck all that. Mm. Speak truth to power. That's yeah. it. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. Call it what the fuck it is. Like somebody got mad at me last night because um, Donald Trump was celebrating the fact that 20 percent of the Atlantic got laid off. Right. And I said, I respect that. <laughs> and he, they said, why do you respect that? And I said, because I respect the consistency of him always riding against his goddamn enemies. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that people don't like him and when something bad happens to those people he says it he yeah. calls it the fuck out right then and there right I don't have a problem with that you know why because he's not being a politician he's mm. not being political mm. he's just speaking from the fucking gut speaking from the heart why the fuck are we afraid to do the same I don't people don't want to pay the cost there's a cost there's a cost telling the truth I'll eat it all day yeah, you might, but a lot of people don't want to pay that cost because it's expensive, man. It's really expensive. You is know? it? Yeah, because I think I think the most important thing to most people is being liked or accepted. I think that is a within our human instincts. I think that's how you you know at at some point on like an evolutionary scale, that's how you survive. If you're the outlier in your crew and your tribe or whatever it is, usually they just killed you back in the day. So I think we have this huge fear, right, of not fitting in. I mean, they do mm -hmm. all those experiments where they have five people in an elevator and four of them turn in another direction. And then the fifth person just turns in the other direction because they're like, hey, I want to fit in too, right? Yeah. We want to fit in. It's baked into our DNA. So the fact that you could say something that would make people in your peer group ostracize you in any way i think that fucking terrifies people mm. i think they see that i think they see the courage in the people that are able to do it because they know that they're fearful of doing it themselves they I don't want to like pay the cost man i agree with you i just like consistency you know what i'm saying and i like um i like people who can be objective because I, I i i pride myself on at least trying to be able to see things from all sides so right. if donald trump is is celebrating that 20 percent of uh, a 20 the Atlantic laid off 20 percent of its employees and this right. magazine has always said negative things about him yep can't you understand why he would be happy about that Son, <laughs> we did a whole <laughs> we did a whole video this last week uh comedy central laid off like all their execs and we did a I whole video it. just celebrating it dancing on their graves it was great why 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 for you why because comedy central is fronted on you they fronted on me and they like went so far as to like purposely try to block me out of shows you know, it was it was really fucked up and it was those executives. Now, Comedy Central is just an entity. Whoever runs it is really responsible. But right now, nobody knows those exact names. So I just give that the name. And hell yeah, we're going to dance on the graves of our enemies. Fuck you and fuck you we, always. That's what it we, is. We applaud as we should when four police officers get fired from that police department in Minneapolis. You know what I'm saying? It's Minneapolis. What it's the fuck am I saying? Minneapolis. Am I saying Minneapolis? It's what? You just said it wrong. No, it's Minneapolis. You're saying Minneapolis. Mini, Minneapolis. <laughs> it's Mini, Minneapolis. Minneapolis. The home of Prince, right? Yes. But we celebrate when those offices get fired. We celebrate when Omarosa got fired by Donald Trump, right? So it's like when you don't like somebody and somebody has been coming at you and they, you know they get laid off or whatever it is, of course Donald Trump is going to celebrate that. But here's the thing. Fuck all that. I respect the consistency and I respect the honesty of it all. Mm -hmm. He's not playing politics. All of us are too busy playing politics. Democrats and liberals are still too busy playing politics. The language of politics are dead. The actions of politics are dead. The actions of politics are dead. You can't sit here and tell me that this is the most dangerous time in America and this is the most dangerous election coming up in November and you're not acting like it. Yeah. You're not acting like it's a clear and present danger. You think it's possible that this is the new politics? What do you mean? Like you, you're saying that the Democrats are not uh are not are are playing politics and that Donald Trump isn't playing politics. But I think Trump has kind of moved I don't even know if I would call it forward, but he's moved politics in a different direction. And no, now this is the new politics. And Democrats are in the past. He, 
Yes, he's Bullworth in this whole shit, man. That's why right. I keep it. Yo, one of my favorite movies of all time is Bullworth. Side note, positively brilliant, Don Cheeto, bro. I just realized Don Cheeto is in three of my favorite movies of all time. Go. Avengers Endgame. Uh-huh. I, I, I will argue that from the time The Incredible Hulk snaps with the uh, Infinity Gauntlet on to the time Tony Stark snaps with the Infinity Gauntlet on, that might be the, the best cinema ever made, bro. I'm talking about, I'm just talking, that, that part of that movie, the whole movie is great, but that part of that movie from when Hulk snaps to when Tony Stark snaps might be some of the greatest, at least action. Gotta Wait, be the greatest action I've Hulk ever seen. When does Hulk snap? Have I when he puts the gauntlet forgot- on to bring everybody back. Because he's the only person that can do it because of the gamma rays that exist within his body. Oh, shit. From that point to when Tony Stark snaps g- might be the greatest action sequences in a movie ever. That's just a side note. But Don Cheeto, three, three movies that he's in, my two, three, three, three of my top five favorite movies. Avengers Endgame, Bullworth, and Talk To Me. I watched Talk To Me last night. I watched Bullworth like a million times since we've been on quarantine. Donald Trump is Bullworth in this whole shit. Because he's speaking truth to power, even if he's lying, (laughs) even if he's lying, because when he is honest, he's extremely honest. And those honest moments come in, come in the real bullshit that pisses everybody off, like retweeting things that are negative about Stacey Abrams or Hillary Clinton, like people calling them names or celebrating the fact that the Atlantic is you know, laying off 20% of his people are making mockeries of handicapped folks. Yo, yes, that shit is I- I- immoral and it's disgusting and it, a, beha- a president shouldn't behave like that. Nobody should behave like that. But it's still refreshingly Funny. honest oh, coming refreshing. from a goddamn okay. president. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. refreshingly honest coming from a politician. Liberals have to realize the language of politics are dead and they have to stop. They have to start bullworfing mother. <laughs> Now, you think it's difficult for liberals to do that because their code of conduct is based on morality and they have to keep intact this morality. So they're kind of handicapped by their own belief system. It's like they can't fight. It's almost like they're engaging in a hand to hand combat, but part of their religion is nonviolence. So how the fuck they going to win that fight? I love what that. I love that because you use the right word. I'm not telling them to be immoral. I'm telling them to be honest. Let Trump do all that shit. Let Trump do the immoral shit. I just want you to be honest. I want you to speak truth to power. I want you to say why things are. What do you want and, them to say that they're not saying? I feel um, like the only way you can combat oh, Trump is if you're as sensational as him. And if they get sensational, then they'll be canceling themselves like they already do. Well, well get sensational through actions. So give you me an example. That, that, that's give why example. I keep calling... That's why I keep calling for Joe Biden or just Democrats in general to lean into blackness. And, you know, um, give me a little moment here. But if you look at the way the world is right now, if you look at, you know, the way coronavirus is impacting black people. Right. If you look at, you know, whether it's the Breonna Taylor case where, you know, police officers run into the wrong house, you know, Accidentally shoot and kill Breonna Taylor, lock her boyfriend up because her boyfriend shot back, even though all his charges are dropped. Thank God for that. Or you look at what happened in Mini Minneapolis. What is it? It's all good, dog. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> it's all to good, say. dog. Said, Prince is what, Where Prince if you is saw, if, if you saw what happened yesterday, right? Uh, this week, if I'm a Democrat, if I'm Joe Biden, I am leaning into blackness in such a way, and this is what I'm saying because it's all the truth. I'm going to say that America has failed. Black people. Historically, I am going to say that the Democrats have failed black people historically. And and you could do it all under the guise of coronavirus and these 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 killings that are happening, whether it's it's by white supremacists or through police brutality. And you say that I want to right the wrongs of systemic racism. Yeah, we all know systemic racism existed. We all know that it was a, a, a designed system that put black people in this position. So why can't any politician, but specifically a Democrat, because they get overwhelming support from black people. Why can't a Democrat stand up and say, we have to fix that? It's a system that needs to be dismantled in America. From, are, are, from, do you from, think from, they're from, not saying that? I feel like every single one of no. them is saying it. Nah, if they, if they are, they're saying it in a way that the American 
public is not understanding. I think they're I think saying that, it. They're just not any actions behind it. And I think I haven't heard them say it, Schultz. You haven't heard Democrats come out and say we got to stop police brutality. That's all they've been saying. Yeah, but specifically, listen to what I'm saying. Yeah, specifically say they this 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 what this how you touch somebody's heart. America has failed black people. Mm-hmm. Democrats have failed black people. The coronavirus is impacting the black community because of all the underlying conditions that have that exist in the black community because of systemic racism. We want to I want to right those wrongs. It is time for a new America. We can't go back to what was anymore because what was wasn't working for everyone. This system was designed to work for the people that it was designed by. Mm. It's not working for everybody else. Mm. Stand on that soapbox and really and you're right. Champion, you know, call out the issues, but then put some specific action behind what you're saying and actually do something like think about it. And I'm going to tell you something. Trump is going to do it. I know this sounds crazy. I know this sounds crazy. I fuck. I know this sounds crazy as fuck. (laughs) I have a feeling Trump is going to come with some type of economic justice plan. I know for black America's yep. for black America. I think that he is going to uh, blame everything that's wrong with black people on Democrats because he's already been doing it. Like when yep. he says things like, you yep. know, uh, 20 of the top uh, 20 of the 20 of the worst countries and cities in America are ran by black uh, by Democrats, not black people. 20 of the worst cities in America are ran by Democrats. I think he's going to use this opportunity to shit on the Democrats, shit on President Barack Obama. And finesse some of that African American vote because he wants some of the black male vote. And the I black would not male be surprised vote is up for grabs um, for the first not time. All, not not all of it. I, no, no, not all of it. But for the first time in my life, I think you see black people being skeptical of what the Democrat Party will do for them or can do for them. This is the first time I've seen any skepticism whatsoever. Well, you're not- well, he, he's smart enough to know you're not getting sisters. You know, there, there are no black women that are that are going ever. Vo- I'm not going to say ever vote for Donald Trump, but they vote overwhelmingly Democrat, like 90 percent voted yeah. for Hillary. They came in 2016. out 2016. Uh, some of the black male vote. I think that he he believes he can finesse a little bit. You now, know what I'm saying. Yeah. Now, the, the issue I, with Hillary was the black male vote didn't come out in the same numbers. I think the black female vote did. That's that's part of it. Do you think um, that part of that was because black men don't cheat and in no way would they even want to be around another woman so they couldn't support <laughs> Hillary? Do you think that that's probably what it was about? I want I want to I like what you're going with this and this is a good <laughs> this is a good way to lead into another thing that um That's how faithful are, black men are, bro. <laughs> Real talk? Well, black black uh black we're calling for a black woman running mate, right? Right. And I know people people say that and they think that's identity politics. Politics, yes. Right? But it's not identity politics. You know what I'm saying? It's just simply looking at the fact that black women are a demo with one of the largest voter turnouts. And if you look at the midterms in 2018, like 55% of all eligible, you know, black women voters voted. Like that's mm. like I, I, I saw the numbers and it's like six percentage points above the national turnout. You know how impressive that is to get more than half of all uh, eligible voting block to come out and vote? Yeah. 55 percent. And then if you look in 2016, 4.4 million voters who voted for Obama in 2012 stayed home. A third of them were black. Mm. But also in 2016, more than 90 percent of black women voted for Hillary, Hillary Clinton. So mm. she lost because Democrats still think the white moderate voters are the most valuable voter. But she focused her energy on trying to get them in 2016. That's why she picked Tim Kaine. And what did 52% of those white women moderate voters go do? Voted for Trump. Mm. So when we're telling you to put a black woman as your running mate, that's not identity politics. That's math. Now, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? now let me ask you this question. This is, let's say we're, we're working for the campaign. I would say to you, I'd go, yo, Black women voters are incredibly loyal. They're going to come out and vote for us no matter what. So why would we put a black female candidate when we already know we're going to get that vote? Charlemagne, why don't we put a black male candidate? Because maybe a black male candidate nope. would be able to get the black men to come out and vote just like the black women who are already going to do it. Okay, you, you now. Said it. You, you said it just now. You what know what I those say? sisters are going to do? Those sisters, they're going to make their sons. Their grandsons, 
their husbands, their boyfriends, their uncles. They going to make all of them go out and vote. It's a, it's a party, baby. Do you like going to a party where there's no women at? No. So if all the black women are saying, I'm going to vote for this guy, those black women are going to get on the phone. They're going to make calls on the candidate's behalf. Why didn't they do that for Hillary, though? Um, I think that... It's like they showed the same loyalty. They went out there. They mm-hmm. fucking did it. But why didn't why didn't they make those calls for Hillary? And also, I don't, I don't, let's step I don't know back the for black, one second. I don't know what the, I don't it's know what the black... It's not their job. It's not black women's job to get black men to vote. Right, but it's, they w- but they will though. That's just what they. That's what sisters do. Sisters is just like if you're if see you dated a black woman before. Did she not want you to do everything she was doing? I think Charlemagne. <laughs> Charlemagne. <laughs> you know, Does she not want you to do everything she was doing? I want to. I, I want to let you know something. That's a a woman thing in general. That's just all women. <laughs> said if my girl <laughs> could get me to wax my pussy she would i just don't have a pussy exactly <laughs> so I, 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 listen anything we do we do it together all of, you know all, I've, i got my eyebrows dark because of black women too. <laughs> i'm now, a whole fucking thug i used to be a whole thug and i got my eyebrows arched right on the tail end of my thugdom Yes. Because two black women told me to do it. Shanira and Nina. I will never forget them. They weren't related to me, Andrew. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I wasn't having any sexual relations with any of them. They were just two Mm -hmm. friends I used to work with at a telemarketing place. And they gassed me up by using one of the alpha males of blackness. Tupac and telling me he gets his goddamn eyes. Wow. Out. So if you got a household full of black women, a community full of black women, and they telling you to go out and goddamn vote for this person. That's going to energize you to go vote, especially when they're doing it at church on Sunday over a fucking fish dinner. (laughs) Yes, yes. You want black women. You want a black woman running mate because you want those black women. So you're saying voters to energize your black women are the motor of the black community. And they will move a hundred million thousand sixty five trillion percent i'm with you on it i trust you on it my one question would still be if we're in the campaign headquarters why the fuck didn't it happen with hillary they don't trace a white woman they don't what it's oh like, maybe it that's true. it maybe black women don't want maybe black women don't want their their man going after a, a frumpy white man, woman shut up, man. <laughs> i think i think hillary my, I, I, listen, I don't know Yo, what the hillary, black male vote hillary is hillary threaten them you think hillary threatened black women <laughs> you think they're a little, you think they're a little skeptical of them big old sweater puppy she had <laughs> hillary had some big bosoms at the man, end of her up, day man. bro Somebody has to look at the numbers of black male voters for Hillary. I don't know what Someone got to look at her bra size. I think it was them big bosoms, <laughs> dog. <laughs> them big bosoms. Look at but, Taylor but, right now. Taylor's in her phone sucking her they, teeth. She's tight. If they, did, if, they, if, they, if they if she didn't have a large black male voter turnout, it probably was because of the 94 crime bill and all of the stuff that was surrounding her with that. You know so what I'm black, because, there was skepticism from black males about yeah, her. Yes. But you don't yes. think that uh, black males will have the same skepticism of a black woman. You think that they'll like having another black woman. Do you think it's possible any black men are going to go, look, I already got one black woman telling me what to do. I don't need another one in office doing that shit, too. Do you think that's possible? Nah. Do, you I think th- that, uh, do you think that I, is I, at all a possibility? I think one thing Joe Biden has going for him is um, people really don't like Trump that much. And, and, and it's not like people are rushing out to vote for Joe Biden. They, a lot of them are rushing out because they just want to get Trump out of the White House. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. why not put, put, put something on your ticket that's going to energize your ticket in a different way? I'll tell oh, you dude, something else. I love I, that. I, feel, yeah, I love I feel, that. I feel like Democrats, man, after Obama, they should have went blacker, browner, younger, more diverse in gender. Like, how the fuck did we get back here? Well, they did. They tried. And it just didn't resonate to the voter population. But yeah. it's not like they didn't try. It's not like they didn't have. They had Kamala. She was up there and they were putting a lot of money behind her. Kamala. Senator Harris. Kamala. Still, still, still might still she might she might be a good running mate. I mean, who else would it be if not Kamala? I saw people saying yesterday on Twitter they were saying um that Charlemagne was a Senator Kamala Harris surrogate 
And so he's just putting this pressure on Joe Biden to pick Senator Harris when that I've, I've, I've named numerous people that I think could be the black woman running mate. You know, I think Stacey Abrams. I you think, want um, Stacey Abrams? You want- I, didn't I, I didn't say I want. I'm just saying she's qualified. Like Stacey Abrams, mm-hmm. Val Demings of Florida. She's a former uh, police chief in Orlando. She's, um, I can't remember what position she holds in Florida, but she, she's actually, she actually said last week she's being vetted. Uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms in Atlanta, Georgia, the mayor of Atlanta. Wait, what is her name? Keisha Lance Bottoms. That's fire. Fire for Atlanta, right? I'm vice telling you, that's President why she wants. Keisha? Dog, we need a vice president, Keisha. Oh, I'm not even thinking about the Keisha. I'm thinking about, about the Bottoms part. Bottom. That probably excited the hell out Lance of Atlanta. Lance Bottoms? <laughs> Yo, Lance Bottoms kind of fire too. That's not like a strip club, right? Yo, I'll meet you at Lance Bottoms around 1 a.m. <laughs> Bro, Keisha Lance Bottoms got to be the vice president of America, dog. Yo, if if the U.S. if the Atlanta census could do like if the Atlanta census could do like a breakdown of how many tops voted for Keisha, I bet you it was so many tops that came out and voted for Keisha. Why? Because tops love bottoms. Hey, (laughs) hey, hey. But so, no. Keisha Lance Bottoms, bro. Hold on, I gotta look this girl up. Yo, yo Keisha, you Lance, never seen Keisha Bottoms? Lance Bottoms. No, nah. yeah, Atlanta got a man named Keisha, man, dude. And, and once again, it's, it's not about identity politics with any of them. Like I think all of them would be amazing. You know, what I'm saying I, I, I do, in, I do particularly like Senator Kamala Harris though because she has the political experience. She's smart. She's tough, and most importantly, she makes old white men nervous. <laughs> Jeff Sessions said out of his own mouth after a Senate hearing, uh, not he, he said out of his own mouth, she makes me nervous. <laughs> Why do <laughs> you say you, that? Have you ever seen Senator Harris in a Senate hearing? She's a beast or what? Pressure. Pressure, 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 pressure. 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 Mean I mean, mean, I mean, pressure. Oh, yes, exactly. <laughs> all of that. She, all of that Jamaican comes out. <laughs> Yo, know, she should have popped up in that versus battle. Just leave one comment. <laughs> Kamala, leave one comment, yo. yo bo- bo- more, more fire, more fire. You know what's sad? It's sad that she would do that, but but she's afraid of being called a panderer. How, who is she pandering to herself? She's Jamaican. We do that to each other because we think because she's a fifty-something-year-old politician. Mm. She's not supposed to have a mean taste. heel toe. She probably got a mean <laughs> heel toe, bro. <laughs> Come on, dog. Dude, we need to oh. put some content out with Kamala Harris. Mean heel toe. Oh. Rice oh, and how, peas and the oxtail. Hell, how old is Senator Harris? Like 52? Um, Look it up. Yo, you don't think you don't think Kamala Harris, when that dance hall music comes on. When that vibes cartel hits, you think when the vibes hit, she don't ha- she don't hit a mean thunderclap when the vibes hit, bro? If she, and if she did it, people would be like, she just learned that. <laughs> She's Come only on, doing bro. it for the campaign. What the blood clot? She's 55. She only, 55 she's years 55, old. Come on, man. Dog. She's 55. She grew up in that. She went, yo, she grew up in that era. She went to Howard University. She was raised in Oakland. Yo, I remember the first time we ever interviewed Senator Harris. Hold on. She says she smokes and everything. She was raised in Oakland. Raised in Oakland. She went to Howard University. Went to Howard. She, da- she, she dated Montel Jordan? Montel Williams. Whatever. <laughs> no, that's a big difference. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> Montel Williams, I think, is a Republican, ain't he? No, Montel Williams was like the longest running talk show host ever. But like, I think he, I I think ever, he was but Republican. He, 17 years. I think I'm pretty sure he was conservative. I'm just saying it's a big difference between Montel Williams and this is how we do it. Bro, but if he if she went to Howard, grew up in Oakland and dated, this is how we do it. <laughs> oh, I can tell you. Who, never mind. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, no. What you got to say? What you got to say? <laughs> don't Come hold on. back now. I know. Bro, don't hold Keisha Lance Bottoms wouldn't hold back. She spilled that tea. <laughs> she would spill that tea. I uh, you know. I'm just saying. What? I don't know. 
Charlotte, man. Charlotte, man, got to fight. You got to fight. You wrestling with yourself because you know the content too juicy, bro. You know the content too juicy, dog. Hold on, let me Google. Let me Google. Well, you let Google, Google. You, you trying to see the information's out there. Yeah, I want to see if it's it. out there before I spill it. <laughs> <laughs> Say what? No, nah, it's just up there. I'm just saying, dog. What nah, would, I'm not, what not would Keisha that. do? Bro? All I'm saying is uh, Senator Harris would be a good VP pick, but like it's a lot of different black Yo, we women We need to out see there. her personality, bro. Can you sh- let she the does. personality shine? She has to it's let the personality buttoned up, dog. shine. It's too buttoned up. We need to see I the personality agree. shine. Do you remember when Sarah Palin came out of nowhere to be the most famous vice presidential candidate in history mm-hmm. off of pure personality? Didn't know anything at all. It was just pure personality. Kamala Harris actually knows shit. She actually has experience. And if she got some personality to go with it. You know what, though? This goes back to skin color, right? Because when you are a black woman who has had to, you know, maneuver the way she's had to maneuver in order to become what she's become, right? She's the second I think the first African-American senator ever in California, like let's not act like the Senate is not a boys club in a, in a good old boys club at that. You know what I'm saying? So when you have to maneuver, you know, to get in those positions, like, yo, you, you got to move a different way. You know, you got to do the dance a little bit, you know, but it's all about what you do once you get there. Right. Exactly. Now you got to take that shot. You got one shot at this. Yo, you got one shot at this. Let's go. so So to your point about the buttoned upness, you know, if that's how you've had to move damn near your whole political career. You think that's the way? It's kind of, yeah, it's kind of hard to pivot. You know what I'm saying? That's why I'm trying to get all of these politicians to know, Democrats especially, the language of politics is dead. Dead. Let Game that over, shit the yo. fuck go. Game over. Talk to me the way we talk, like how we're talking right now. People will like that shit. If you watch the Biden interview, yeah. when Biden was about to say, I kicked their ass, and then he stopped himself. No, motherfucker. Drop it. You let that shit go. You 78, you might die tomorrow. That's <laughs> right. Like, let that shit the What fuck you got go. to lose, bro? You got to lose, man. Let that shit go. And I get it. Oh, you know, Michelle Obama, when they go, you know, low, we go high. You can still go high and tell a motherfucking truth. You know what I'm saying? You can still call shit for, for, for what it is. I'll be like, honest I, like, with you, bro. When someone goes low, you kind of got to go low. Bro, you kind of got to go low. You just got to make sure you win. Fuck no, all that mom. go high shit. Somebody go low. I feel like low. dancing. I'm going to take it to the floor with him. I'm going <laughs> to get on my goddamn back and I'm going to do that motherfucking windmill. I'm going to get his uh, How low can you go? Let's oh, go. We got a limbo competition? Go is that what's going <laughs> on over food? here? I'm going, I'm going, baby. If I feel like dancing, I'm going. I re- I reserve the right to be petty as fuck. Yes. Okay. Yo, if I feel like giving petty. you some attention, yeah, if I feel like giving you some attention and energy, we going limbo, baby. Mm. Okay. Mm. And I'm going to win. And I'm going to win because I promise I give less fucks to you. Mm. Have you have you ever offered to suck somebody's dick in a bed? <laughs> <laughs> right? You don't give a, you don't give less fucks than me. I'm telling oh. you that right now. Okay. <laughs> oh God. Oh. So, That's the moral what we of the should story do is it. just make it a not give a fuck contest. That make will it be a fun, not bro. Give a fuck contest, man, and make it. And yo, this is so crazy, right? Like uh, when it comes to. Any conversation that you have, that's the uh, that's the biggest issue with the Joe Biden interview. The biggest issue with the Joe Biden interview was the lack of, I think, respect he showed the platform. I think he knew it was a platform he had to do. But I don't think he approaches Anderson Cooper that way. Do you think it's because I don't think he approaches. Do you think it's because and I'm giving you credit here, like. Anderson is maybe. Uh, is more like I'm going to be do my media trained interview with Anderson because Anderson is traditional media and he is media trained. Whereas you're actually having a real conversation with someone. So we got to see something that Biden would really say. And in his defense, I don't think he meant it in a racist way. I thought that he thought he was connecting with you. And that's a joke that he would make if you guys were at the bar and you're talking about politics. And he just happened to make it on one of the biggest platforms on the planet. It was a great, great, great granddad joke. 
Yes. Like, like, like we know how bad dad jokes. Can yes. Be. Yes. Can you imagine what great, 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 great granddad jokes sound like? Honestly, they're usually a little bit more racist. A little more racist. Just a, a nice f- little, <laughs> nice little tinge of slavery. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A little, a little <laughs> salt, a little salt bay, a little salt bay of bigotry. You know what I'm saying? Oh, babe, you know what I'm saying? It's a salt bay of bigotry. You know, and, and, no. and was and was that his intention? No, no. He's 78 years old, and I'm not making excuses for that white man whatsoever. Yeah. He got to wear that shit. He own that shit. I'm just telling you, I get it, and I understand it. The good you know thing I mean? about Biden is he's already forgot about it. So we don't have to worry about that whatsoever. People are going to say, people are going to say, how do you feel about the Breakfast Club interview? Who's like, I was interviewed during breakfast? What the fuck are you talking about? We had a whole interview during breakfast, baby. Hold on. There's a, there's a breakfast club now? I've been in the Senate for 50 something years. I never knew it was a breakfast club. Well, let's get some hot cakes then, sweetheart. Uh, it's, it's very interesting. I'll tell you another good dynamic too. I What's was that? watching um I was watching the view. My OG Jim Clyburn. Um salute to, salute to Jim Cl- salute to Congressman Jim Clyburn. Um most powerful black person in Congress. Period. Mm. Right? Yeah. Um the person who like let's be clear, he won the election for Joe Biden. He won the primaries for Joe Biden when when Senator when 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 you know uh um, OG Clyburn got up there and he endorsed Joe Biden. That changed the tide of Joe Biden's election. Who is this guy? What's his name? Jim Clyburn, South Carolina. Jim Clyburn. Jim Clyburn. Okay. Big dog. He was on The View yesterday. And, um, you know, they asked him, Sonny, salute to Sonny. Sonny asked him about, you know, uh, is a black woman VP a must? Because he once said that it wasn't a must. And uh, OG Jim Clyburn said, well, I'm not into telling people what they must do. I'm into telling people what they should do. He said that, you know, he was married for 50 something years and him and his wife never told each other what they must do. They told each other what they should do. Um, I agree with that, but uh, I disagree because white people in this country have been telling black people what they must do for years. Right. And so now that black people are telling Joe Biden what he must and should do in order to make sure that he secures the black vote, in November, I don't see a problem with that. I think that's what you're supposed to do when you're a citizen of the United States of America. I think that your votes are quid pro quo and you should put demands out there and you should get them back. But Dinah, um, uh, Dana Bass asked Joe Biden um, about that on CNN yesterday. And she said, Charlemagne says that, and please add this, Taylor. Already. After your interview with The Breakfast Club, Charlemagne told CNN that he thinks a black woman as a running mate is necessary. Well, Charlemagne's really entitled to his own opinion. Okay. Um, there's others, uh, for, for example, I just was, uh, Jim uh, Clyburn was just on The View, and he said it's not necessary. Um, so- he said, Charlemagne said that it's necessary for you to have a black woman VP. And Joe Biden chuckled in his mind. I was thinking he was saying, this nigga, this little nigga Charlemagne, why the fuck are you asking me about this little but he said, hey, Jim Clyburn says it's not necessary. So that was interesting to me, right? Because it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a different dynamic, right? It's, it's OG Jim Clyburn and then it's 40-something-year-old me. Two different generations of South Carolina, you know, probably looking at this situation from two different ways. Because I explained to y'all why I think a black woman running mate would help energize Joe Biden's campaign. Mm. But I can also see why Jim Clyburn would say, um, I'm not into telling people what they must do. Because one thing I've realized, you know, over the past few years is politicians have egos. Huge ego. Mm. And a lot of these ideas can't be floated in public. And the reason they can't be floated in public, because when VP Biden picks his running mate or VP Biden decides to do X, Y, and Z, whether it's an economic justice plan for black America, VP Biden wants to look like he did it. Mm. All all politicians want to look like they did it. Mm. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to look like it was pressure. They don't want to look like it was, it was done under duress. Like it was a demand. They don't want to do none of that. Mm. They just want to make it seem like it came from them. Mm. So I get it. 
You know what I'm saying? I get it. I understand why, you know, he feels the way that, you know, he feels. And I hope that they respect we the people when we express how we feel. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Because <laughs> at the end of the day, you said this to me once. Politicians work for us. It's about the people. We the people. Mm. I, I, I love the fact when Mr. Biden and Mr. Clyburn get together and they share ideas amongst each other. But if they're doing what they think they should be doing just amongst the political circle, they're not listening to the people. Mm. So if you're not listening to the people and you're not presenting something to the people that the people need, how do you expect we the people to want to support you come election time? Mm. It's just that simple for me. Yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense. And if you want to give the people something that they don't think that they need, you first need to convince them that they need it. Yeah. That is the point of yeah. democracy, right? You're not a tyrant. It's like you have an obligation to your supporters to convince them that the pathway to progress is through this idea you have. But you first have to get them to agree to that idea. I guess what I would say when it comes to the, the black female running mate is – for me, I think the best course of action is convincing Biden and the powers that be that that's the best thing for winning because of the math, not the best thing of w for winning because of identity politics. Because I think you lose a lot of people on identity politics. I think Democrats have been trying to run on identity politics for a long time and they haven't mm -hmm. really been successful. So say, hey, we want a black female VP for the same reason Trump wanted a religious old white guy because yeah, I mean, yo, Amy Trump Klobuchar, wasn't they religious. Wanted, they wanted, so they, they wanted, needed a religious guy. And Biden is not getting support from the black community like he should. And if that is the community that can turn this election, then shit, target them. Absolutely. That's why I said it's not about identity politics. It's but about it, math. But I, he, I think that's he, smart. It's math. But even when they do grab, like if they want Amy Klobuchar, why do you think they want Amy Klobuchar? Who, they want her because she's a white. Can un, someone explain Amy Klobuchar to me? I don't know a single point uh, that she has. I don't know a single policy. I don't know what she does. Somehow she made it to the end of the primary. She's got to oh, be that was complete. Money. That was money. Say what? That was that was money. Yeah, but who? How does she have money? <clears throat> I mean, people were donating to but her. But why? You know what I, mean? so I think they put her there for a reason. Like, I think they kept her around for a reason. They want to give her as much visibility as possible. Maybe because they were thinking about slotting her in in that a VP, VP role. Yeah, 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 yeah. And maybe now that's been thrown up. But like, there's no way that she could be in every single debate and have not a single meaningful line in a any debate and still manage to stick around, she has to be propped up by the party. They have to be propping well, her up. They, 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 they want her, you know, they want her because she can get those white, moderate women that they lost with Hillary. Mm. They, think that, that they think that she can help with that. So it's the same thing. It's still identity politics. It's just a different identity. You know what I'm saying? And by the way, Joe Biden put himself in these, these, these corners by saying, I want a female running mate are committing to a black woman on the Supreme Court. So now we're going to hold you to task. Now go all the way with it, baby. Matter of fact, let's get us a black secretary of treasury too and a black secretary of education. Since black people are at the bottom in economics and education, let's, let's put some people in there that may work on, on behalf of our benefit in a real way. Dude. Because let's be clear, everybody always says, if black people are doing good, that means America is doing great. Yo. I feel like that. You know, it's interesting. The black female judge on the Supreme Court, you know, that's a, a lifelong position, right? Yes, indeed. Black women live a long time. I don't even know if black women die, bro. I, have have you ever witnessed that? Nah, my grandma, but she was ready to go. But she they can live a she, she long time, dude. That is a long. We're going to have a Supreme Court justice for a long time, dude. That's good. Your aunt lived to 104 years old. And dude, that's eating cheese she, whiz what, what, a few what, what times was she a week, like? man. Exactly. What, what was she shaped like, Taylor? What was she shaped like? What? Is this shape of yours running the family? First of all, what is the shape I have? Let me know. I mean, slight pair, slight liberty no, bell, but that's only because of quarantine. <laughs> only because so of quarantine. First of all, I have a hoodie on. Now you mean you want to take this off. 
You said you what? Bill. I have a hoodie on. Now you make me want to take this You're off. You're wearing all black for a reason, Taylor. It's fine. Listen, it's black okay. I wear all the time. Stop. Taylor, Cardi B made it okay yesterday. She showed her stomach what? on Instagram. I thought that was so no. cool of Cardi, man. That shit was hilarious. I mean, extra bravo. 15 in quarantine. We get it, Taylor. It's okay. Listen, I have to say, <laughs> yeah. Taylor came into the studio. She looked fantastic. Thank you. I bet Taylor she won't looked- walk behind that camera again. I saw her walk um, the first time. I bet she won't do it again. Happy I'm not going to lie. When she walked wobble, baby, by. Wobble, baby. 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 Get in there. Yeah, yeah. Get in there. Yeah, yeah. Get in there. Yeah, yeah. Get in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It was fucked up, bro. When she walked by, Alex went fee five full form. I couldn't believe it, bro. <laughs> Drive bro, was it over for the fu- Let's pay some bills and find out if it's over for the fucking quarantine. I, I, is, is it over? So, Let's pay some bills, It's a man. wrap. It's a wrap. Guys, turn your dream into a reality with Squarespace, okay? Um, this quarantine is about to be over, so you might as well get your online business popping. Squarespace makes it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Whether you're looking to start a new business, uh, showcase your work, publish content, sell more products, uh, Squarespace is the tool for you. Beautiful templates created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about anything with a few clicks. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself. If you do not have a website, you do not have a business. I don't care how small or large your business is. You need that representation online to validate it to the people who have never heard about it. So make sure you go use Squarespace's powerful e-commerce functionality and it lets you sell anything online and analytics to help you grow your site in real time everything optimized for mobile right out of the box and there's nothing to patch or upgrade ever buying domains is simple and you'll get the help you need with Squarespace's 24-7 award-winning customer support. Squarespace empowers, empowers millions of people from designers to lawyers, artists to gamers, even restaurants and gyms to turn great ideas into something real. So head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. It's absolutely free. When you're ready to launch, use the offer code IDIOT to save 10% on your first purchase of a website or domain. Squarespace.com slash IDIOT. Offer code IDIOT. All right. We back. Um, you know, we try to do segments on this show, but it, it just... It no, goes we everywhere. did. That was po- that was positively brilliant. And right? what a fucking idiot. All combined in one. Oh, you think we did what a fucking idiot with it as well? I think, yeah, I think, I think it's, it's clear that we thought that, you know, what Joe Biden did was fucking idiotic. <laughs> you know okay. Saying? I got you. So positively brilliant was the interview itself, the way it affected uh, the news cycle and what a fucking idiot was what Joe Biden said. Yeah. But I mean, listen, I, I, I like I said, I, I can always see both sides of situations. I don't, you know, it's hard for me to call something. No, it's not hard for me to call something stupid. I can call something stupid. But I can also call it stupid and then say, see why it was said. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, yeah, Two yeah, yeah. things can be true. Okay. Two what things do you, what do you want to do next, then? Is it over for this fucking quarantine, Son, bro? real talk. Real talk. It might be a rap ski, man. I'm, I'm, done, I, done? Got, I, got, I got Taylor Gang in here, okay? She's invited to the studio you know, she's ordering chicken tenders, delivery, not washing her hands, nothing. You didn't wash your hands. Did you use any Purell? You did? You told me that's just saliva that you put in a little. Can I go, can I go straight tinfoil conspiracy theory? Please, please. I was with wax I, um, over the weekend. Al was with wax over the weekend, hanging out on a boat. You was in Orlando, Al? Yeah. You flew? Yeah. Tell me about that experience <clears throat> flying. I, said I was fully masked and gloved up. And wiped everything down before I sat there. Airplane was packed? Yeah, the airplane. There wasn't a single empty seat. See, I'm pussy. I wanted to fly to South Carolina this week, but I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't I can't risk taking all the kids and all that. I'm pussy. I can't do it. Can I I'm something? just not I'm not ready for that yet. Mm. Now by the end of June, by the end of June, I'm gonna be like them motherfuckers in Camden in New Jersey. I'm telling you that shit right uh, now. I'm going People are ready, bro. Yeah, what's up, sweetheart? I feel like though that like people I've come among, if you're saying, because I was saying to you, like, I want to go to Florida near the end of June too, whatever. But some people are against it. Like, oh, I don't know. Like, you're trying to get killed. I feel like, and then the ones that don't care about it or that just want to go, 
they're labeled as like Trump supporters and the other one. That's what they're giving me. We've politicized it yeah. for sure. I agree with you. Like the people who are like, I want to travel. I want to go out of all of a sudden become Trump supporters. I and think the people what they're trying to tell Taylor like, is to get a red, get a MAGA bathing red, suit. One piece bathing suit. Yeah. They don't want you to go to Florida in your mm -hmm. present physical condition. When they said people are going to kill you, they mean on Instagram when you post a picture. Charlemagne. Yeah. <laughs> what? Stop saying that. What? What? But being honest, <laughs> we love you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I am not fat. I didn't say you was fat. Nobody said fat. You, you, you did poorly. describe her using a fruit that is not skinny. <laughs> it's not like you called okay. her a banana. A pear could be curvy or lumpy, depending on your perspective. That's true. That okay. is true. Liberty Bell. Depends is, which way you look at it. Oh, right. excuse me. If you I look would at like it upside down, it's big at the me, top. Excuse me. I would like to be shaped. You look at it as the way it is, it's big at the bottom. Coke bottle. Now, I, <laughs> this was the weirdest thing I've ever heard. Uh, Taylor just goes, <laughs> I would like to be shaped as, and then she goes, a plastic Coke bottle. Because if I said a Coke bottle, y'all might, oh, they can. Da, da, da. No, we would have thought the bottle because you said bottle. <laughs> Okay. Now, Taylor, when I think of plastic Coke bottles, I think of them. When I think of plastic Coke bottles, I think of the goddamn three liter. Those Whoa. three liters are <laughs> they're just about your circle height. Circle straight down. <laughs> yep, and they're about your height, and they're just big and round. So, what three? What what size Coke uh, Coke plastic bottle you are you? You with the glass bottle? Yeah. You with the bottle? Eh? Yeah. Yeah. I hate you. And we're not fat shaming Taylor at all. <laughs> We're just fit, we're all just extra of, fifteen everyone, pound. No, there's no. First, tell of the all, truth, Taylor. How much you gained during quarantine? Be honest. Before quarantine, or I don't. I just I started working out last month. Oh, so you had to lose some pounds? No, I just like to be fit. I like to work out. <clears throat> I just didn't have time. All right. I hate well, that. congratulations. Why do I get involved because in this? I'm defending you. Egging him I'm, not, I'm not egging him. Am I egging you? Am I egging? Does she look like an egg? <laughs> <laughs> A Twitter egg. Yes, she does. <laughs> Listen, we love we we love young Liberty Bell. Uh, yes, stop. Yeah. Liberty stop Bell amazing. is fucking amazing. <laughs> Liberty Bell Yo, is amazing. Hey, you know what's going to be it. funny? When she does go to Florida and she posts her little nasty ass thirst traps on the gram, mm -hmm. somebody going to be like, Yo, Liberty Bell, let me see that crap. Guess what? <laughs> <laughs> They're all going to get blocked too. <laughs> Yo, young Liberty. Yeah. Young Liberty, let me warning. see that crap. Let me see that crap. Everyone that's going to follow Charlemagne, just, just get me Yo, to get blocked. I was thinking blocked. how to fit the crack in, and I didn't. I was like, how am I doing it? I Liberty, see what you did, too, because the Liberty Bell is in Philly. You're, you're good, Charlemagne. Good job. Taylor, listen, you going to Florida for real? Um, Yeah, probably, maybe. I didn't book it yet. But <sighs> I, I want to so. go. I want to go. People are going out, man. People are going out. Memorial Weekend out, said bro. it. You see. <laughs> and you know what's mad funny is that White like and black. You know what's funny is that like people in New York, like we're here judging other people for going out, right? It's but we're talking. in the dangerous part. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? So if we leave New York to go to the safe shit, we're good. My brother just went to the zoo over the weekend. To the, the zoo? zoo? Yeah. He has a family. Yeah. Uh huh. And the zoo's open? Yeah. Ain't that the reason why we got coronavirus in the first place? <laughs> hanging out with bats and shit like that? The fuck y'all trying to do? I think one thing we don't take into consideration, man, is that, yo, man, you, if you're in a one-bedroom apartment or a two-bedroom apartment, that ain't like the, the greatest place to quarantine. I mean, Bro, don't get me I wrong. Know. It's That's better. my life. <laughs> what are you talking about? We don't take into consideration. I've been considering it every day for the last two months. The fuck are you talking about, bro? There's only there's only but so many times you can open that window to get some ass. <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yes, I know what you're saying. You be opening that window and want to slide out that bitch. That's, That's what I'm good. saying. I get it. Like I, I could not imagine living in a congested ass city like New York or Detroit or Chicago and like you're in this apartment all day. Like, yo, that's the South is much better because you got a you got yard and you got your know, backyard. Even in L.A., you can go for a nice long drive. Like, what do you do in New York? Walk to the fucking bodega? Mm hmm. Walk down the block. I'm not going to lie. I love New York with no people in it. It's amazing. Yes. You take a walk. Nobody's out. It's incredible. Um, 
I heard, the rats, si- I heard the rats ain't bullshit. Nah, right the rats now. are the rats are tight right now, bro. Because there's no <laughs> food, them. bro. I heard they Even, are yo, not the homeless playing. people. The homeless people moved out. I don't know where they went, but they <laughs> moved. That's not true. They did. There's no homeless people on the street anymore. Yes, there is. I don't see any homeless people. They're on the, really? they're on the train. They're on the train. Yeah. What? I haven't been riding the train to be I honest with you. All I know is, man. Um. I have a conspiracy theory. This is a straight tinfoil hat. All right, go. It is just, if, if I didn't know people who personally died from coronavirus, I would absolutely be one of those people who would be believing that this shit was a hoax. Can I, can I, can I, th- can I add something to that conspiracy theory? Uh-huh. I think the media is aware that they might have exaggerated the severity of the virus. And I agree with that. I think that they are, I think the reason why they've leaned in so much to these past few uh, events that we've seen, these races, uh, you know, the racist, horribly racist events, but I think the reason why they've transitioned completely away from coronavirus and into these racist events is because they're like, we need something else. This corona shit ain't popping. Let's slowly move corona to the BRC store. Now we talking, because think about it, we, they literally switched they switched, right? The whole thing was thousands of people are dying and we've had 100,000 deaths, 100,000 deaths, this, that, there. And now the only thing you see all across media is the death of uh, George Floyd in Before that, it was Ahmed Aubrey. Yeah. And even the Arbery thing you haven't seen brought up that much anymore. It popped up for a week and then it was gone. And obviously that crazy white bitch in the park, right? That, that is crazy. dominating the storylines right now. And I haven't heard anything about Corona at, at all. Fauci Trump, not even talking. Fauci not talking. Trump ain't Trump's still doing the daily breast. Uh, I said breast. Daily pre- bre- press briefings. Mm-hmm. But they're not covering them like they used to. It's just weird to me that. They need I, a new listen, story, I think, I think hoax is the wrong word. I, 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 I lean more into what you said because, yes, I feel like they didn't know what coronavirus was. And I think that the world reacted the way they should have. Yes. You shut everything the fuck down. Air on the side you know of know caution. That's what they air say, on, right? Air on the side of caution. If it costs us a few weeks with the economy, so the fuck be it. But I think um, after they started doing more antibody tests and realizing that more people actually had it than they originally thought, so that led them to believe, uh, led them to know based off science that it wasn't as fatal as they once thought it was. Mm-hmm. I think that's what kind of eased all the powers that be's tension about the situation. Mm-hmm. But... You done scared the fuck out of America, right? And I don't blame anybody because I'm still doing it. I'm not coming back out until I know it's safe to come the fuck back out mm. in a real way. I don't know what that will be for me. I don't know if it's just watching a bunch of people out over a span of a month or so or, you know, making sure the hospitals don't get overwhelmed or vaccine treatment. I don't know what the fuck it will be. All I know is I'm not personally coming out until I see that it's totally safe for me and my family. I'm not there yet because y'all scared me. Y'all scared me half the fucking death. I'll be honest with you, and bro. Now, and now I've been it's just out. interesting that, huh? I've been out. I went bar hopping last I week. I get it. Where? I get it. They're, they're selling think, drinks outside that. the bars and restaurants in my neighborhood. Oh. So I just went from one to the next one. If I could go out to dinner tonight, I would. I've been calling comedy clubs in New York City. They can't open for legal reasons. But I'm like, yo, let's just do a secret show. Like, I'm itching. I'm ready to get back out. I'm about to look and maybe book some shows on the road for states that, that are already open. Because I know they're starting to break it. They're starting to, like, allow live shows and stuff to happen. So I'm ready to get back into this thing, man. We got to go back to a normal life sooner or later and... Honestly, people need to see people like you and me going to do these normal things so they feel comfortable doing them. Well, they're not going to see me doing it. And by the way, <laughs> I'm a homebody and I've been a homebody. So this is heaven for me. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, but I just think it's weird that shit can go from threat level 10. Right. And then two weeks later, everybody and their mother, because let's not act like this is just a Republican thing, right? Like California's reopening up new york is partially reopening up. like 40 all 50 states i think at this point are partially partially reopening so i just don't understand thing, how everything yeah. goes from don't leave the house two weeks ago to okay you can leave the house under these guidelines it's just a little it's just like a little strange because the threat isn't gone they just realized like yo if you look at like and granted i'm sure elon musk has his own reasons why he wants to open shit up right uh, but he understands his 
power and he understands his reach and he understands probably, you know, his voice and what that means. When you see him nonstop tweeting almost throughout this entire thing, but definitely within the last month, like, you know, let's get a real look at these death warrant uh, certificates. Let's get a real look at the numbers. Let's get a real look at who's actually dying from Corona, who's not. When he's that skeptical and willing to go on a public platform like Rogan and shit and talk about it, that's how you know there might be some fuck shit at hand. Now, I agree, err on the side of caution. But when you realize that you were maybe a little overly cautious, it's okay to back that up and say, hey, guys, yeah. we could crack it open now. You're safe. Everything's okay. But are you safe, though? That's my point. Like, how, wh why are we any safer today than we were two, than, than we weren't two weeks ago? You're not. Like what, like, what? Okay, we're not, Chris. Chris, talk to us live from Wuhan. What, what's going on? <laughs> Social distancing worked. Unfortunately, it gave us a pause against this thing. And we should have used the pause to radically ramp up testing and tracing. And we haven't really taken advantage of that. So now the tell is going to be what happens three weeks from now. I hope that this thing is petered out on its own, but there's no real reason to believe that's happened. Now, have we not now have we really not ramped up on testing? Because I, 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 I know I'm doing um, I'm actually doing a few testing uh my understanding is we've tested 15 million people and that's more than any other country in the world that's, that's not a total, lot though. but not per capita we still rank we're like 25th or 30th per capita yeah it's 340 million people in america that's not a lot that's though. nothing i mean i think in new york city right now from my understanding country? it's becoming much easier to get a test in the rest of the country it's still extremely difficult to get a test so until you know who has this thing i don't think we've radically changed the position we were in a couple months ago it was just the social distancing worked if everybody runs back out again if you do get it not, not to me yeah you know you can politicize it but at the end of the day you know what i've been saying this isn't lebron versus michael it's a hypothetical question we're going to know the answer in a couple of weeks yeah 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 the people came out too early they did it and if it turns out that for whatever scientific reason this thing has lost momentum on its own that's beautiful. And then let's keep going. But I just don't think we've had any real reason to believe that it's quote unquote safe right now. Do we think, do we feel like there's any credence to herd immunity and the heat being that it's summertime and everybody gets back out there and starts being around each other? Herd, immunity, herd immunity is real. Herd immunity is a real thing. I mean, the heat sure. may be a, a real thing, but I, th I don't know. So there's some studies that saying that the, the mask and the social distancing might not have done anything to help at all. You know, it's this might just be the course that the virus took and maybe less people were able to get infected by it than we thought. And um, obviously, the most densely populated places, places like New York, where you have people together on a subway and you have mass groups of people in incredibly tiny spaces, 10 people sharing an elevator every morning going to work. Right. Like you have these huge apartment buildings where you have thousands of people living in one building sharing a five by five elevator. Of course, you're going to have more transfer of that. Where in Georgia, like you said, or South Carolina, it's like, yeah, you might bump into one person at Walmart and you're probably going to stay a few feet away from them anyway. So you're just not going to have as many interactions where you're like tightly closed in breathing the same air. But yeah. Hey, listen, if, if, if it happens to where the virus does, you know, just magically disappear. And yo, Sylvia Brown and Donald Trump are right. right? <laughs> Sylvia Brown, the psychic, you know, she predicted the coronavirus. You know, she she wrote a book. I think it came out. Um, I don't know when the book came out. It was like early two thousands. But she said in around twenty twenty two, a severe pneumonia like illness will spread throughout the globe, attacking the lungs and the bronchial tubes, and resisting all known treatments. Almost more baffling than the illness itself will be the fact that it will suddenly vanish as quickly as it arrived, attack again 10 years later, and then disappear completely. <laughs> Sylvia Brown said that. that Sounds that, like a book that she that, that came out in like, I think it was the year 2000. Bro, that could be coronavirus or uh, R. Kelly. What? <laughs> do you think the lines help? Chris, do you think the lines help like waiting outside the grocery store? Because I don't think the that lines works. help. Like, what do you mean? They're making people wait outside of stores to go in, I guess, to lower the capacity, whatever. But I don't feel like that does anything because they're still not that separated in the line. And it's not like they're cleaning down the store 
when they're uh, when someone new comes in? Do you think? That's um, I mean, I think I think the biggest thing that we've learned, and I think the thing that's tricky with this is it shifts all the time. Is you're much more likely to pick this up indoors than outdoors. I think outdoors, the way the wind works, it blows away the particles. If if you do a little social distancing and wear a mask outdoors, I think you got a pretty good shot. I think the the place you're really in danger is sustained periods indoors breathing recycled air, which is like, you know, when you said you weren't flying to South Carolina, I was like, that's a good choice. I would be really worried about taking a, a plane right now. Uh, Taylor, I'd be wearing a mask if I was you. I hope I'm wrong. But like anytime, up. anytime you're inside with people, I think that's when you're at the greatest risk. And I think when you're outside, you know, the wind's going to do what it does. It blows it away. You're less likely to ingest it because I think what they're learning is surface contamination is much less of a threat than actually inhaling this stuff. Interesting. Al, you've been, you've been on top of this. What do you think? Um, it was interesting to see what Sweden did. Yeah. Because Sweden didn't have a lockdown okay. the way we had it. Right. And so right now they're up to 30% herd immunity. So 30% of people have it, wait a minute, immunity have gotten immune t- immunity. Yeah. So it's like, and that's more than any other country, but they also took a harder hit initially. So at first we were clowning them like, oh, you didn't do it. And now you have a lot of old people dying. But now their numbers are kind of dwindling down the same way how every, all the countries who did lockdown right. are dwindling, but they have their- uh, Their immunity achieving. is higher. Yeah. Interesting. So it's like- We've we'll probably have the same amount of deaths. We're just going to spread them out over a longer yeah, period exactly. of time. Where they were like, well, okay, we'll just take the deaths. If it's going to be the same amount of deaths, regardless, we'll just take those deaths early on and then not kill the economy in the process and not kill. So that's a way smarter, but it's a risk because it couldn't have happened that way and it could have been really bad. Yeah, they just roll the dice and it ended up working. Yeah, interesting. Yeah. Okay, okay. I don't know, guys. I'm gals. going with Camden, bro. When in doubt, I always go with Camden. <laughs> Whatever Camden is doing, bro, that's my moral compass, dog. Here's the thing. I'm not in a rush. Mm-hmm. It's summertime. I'm cooling. Uh, I'm not in a rush to do anything. I'm going to just sit back and hope for the best. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not uh, praying that any of this is wrong. I don't want to make anybody look bad. I hope that this works out for the best. Right. Like I'm not like I don't, I don't like people that politicize these things. Right. Right. I understand why they do it because we're in a presidential election. Yeah. So, yes, you want to make your opponent look bad as possible. But right. nobody should be hoping this shit don't work. Yeah. You know I'm saying 100%. we don't want more people to die. We don't want more people to be sick. Yes. We want the economy to, to get back popping because I'm going to tell you all something. That's the worst thing. Like that is one thing that, uh, you know, Trump and a lot of other people said that was very true. And they said that, you know, don't let the um, solution be worse than the. Yeah. Don't let the solution be worse than the problem. or don't let the cure yeah. be worse than the disease, whatever the fuck yeah. it is, because I'm going to tell you something, man. When you have a country right now where people don't think they're getting justice. When, you know, uh, there's no empathy, there's no compassion, you know, when you see police killing folks, when you see white supremacists killing folks, when you see you know, white women in the park, you know, f- fucking with bird watchers and killing dogs, right? On top of an economy that's fucked up and people don't have no jobs and they can't eat, bro. And you and you taking my dignity away, fam. Bro, it gets dangerous. That shit is a that, this shit ain't even a ticking time bomb. It's just only a matter of time. Have you heard of the? Uh, there's an expression. Uh, I think it was with the Roman Empire. Chris, you can correct me if I'm wrong on this, but. Uh, just give them a, a circus and bread or give the people bread and circus and they'll stay calm no matter the situation. Something like that, Chris. Does that make sense? Bread and circus. Absolutely. Yeah. So it's like uh, once you stop giving us bread, which is the economy's down and we can't go to work and nobody can make money and you stop the circus, which is, hey, there's no sports going on, right? There's no live entertainment. There's not a lot of shit happening. So now the entertainment factor is gone and we don't get the food, you're going to have people in a very hostile mood and they're going to be eager to be radicalized. It does not matter what the thing they're radicalized towards is. They will be radicalized. So motherfuckers better figure shit out. 
And if you got people already at the end of their rope, do you really think that they're going to sit around and continue to watch, you know, a police officer sit there with his knee in somebody's neck? Ooh, ooh. Ooh, ooh. You're, already, you're already like, fuck it. I ain't got shit to lose anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. The world coming to a fucking end anyway. Mm-hmm. I ain't, my, my kids ain't eight in months. Fuck you. Like, what you think gonna happen? Like, I'm actually, when we finish this podcast, I'm about to post a Tupac video. It's actually two of them I want to post. One of them, I'm way too pussy to post, right? <laughs> send it to me. <laughs> T- I, I actually, I actually sent it to Ti. Ti posted it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna, send, I'm gonna send it to Taylor to insert. I'm gonna let you hear it. I'm gonna let you hear it. Okay. But this, this is the reality of the situation. Hold on. I'm gonna let you hear it. Hold on. Hold on. Let me find it. Hold on, Taylor. I just sent it to Taylor, and I started the post, and I was like, eh. Hold on. Listen. All my shit is positive. All my shit is positive. That's the white man got you thinking my shit is negative and positive. All my shit positive because it tell niggas to swing back. It tell sisters to swing back and it tell niggas to swing back. If that ain't positive, crack don't sell. You got me? You feel me? That's positive. White people got you believing just because I'm telling a nigga to stop getting his head kicked in by the police to take the gun he would use to shoot his brother in a second. And kill the motherfucking cop that's killing you, your family, and everybody else on the block. You know what I'm saying? Kill that motherfucker. That is not insane. That is sane and straight like a motherfucker. That's positive. Like a motherfucker. Because from where I'm standing, that would save a black family. You know what I'm saying? But from where they standing, that would keep a mother motherfucker off welfare. And keep another motherfucker shooting at cops, crooked cops that be trying to shoot us down. So fuck them. It's all positive. Everything I do is positive, goddammit. And I'm going to tell you why I'm too pussy to post that. I'm too pussy to post that because I don't think um, people will understand the nuance in what Tupac is saying. I understand nuance. Tupac said crooked cops that are shooting at you and killing you and everybody else on the block. Like that is a very specific set of people that he's talking about. He's not talking about all police officers, right? And even if you don't agree with what Pac is saying, you're not dealing with the reality of the situation. Mm. The reality of the situation is eventually it's going to come to that. It just is. Like when you have an economy that is fucked up and people not eating and people don't have no jobs and now you're taking people's dignity away, like literally just taking their dignity away, got him on the middle of the street. You got your knee in his neck. He can't breathe. He's peeing on himself. And you just like, fuck it. What do you think? What do you think's going to eventually happen? Like, how much longer do you think that you can do that to a people and they will not react with violence? Honestly, not much longer, dude. You're not- shocked it hasn't happened already. I'm a little bit shocked. Like, Deep inside me, I'm I'm thinking Tupac, like Tupac with the, like, doesn't that make you go first off? Fuck your, you know what I mean? Like, well, well, first of all, the reason I respect Pac, and and you know, another reason I'm too pussy to post that I like people that practice what they preach. Pac actually did that. Yeah, Pac was in Atlanta and saw two white guys beating up on somebody. I don't even know if they were white. I, I, don't, I think they were white. I think it was two white guys beating up on somebody. Mm-hmm. And he jumped out of the car. Mm-hmm. They pulled guns on him. He pulled out his guns and shot both of them. They ended up being cops. Undercover, like undercover cops. So yeah. Pac was practicing what he was preaching. Pac was the type of person that wasn't going to stand there and watch those cops do that to that brother in Minneapolis. You know what I'm saying? It's and that's, what I, that's, that's the other thing that bugs me out. Like, yo, don't tape the brother. Help the brother. Yeah. God damn. That's weird. But like, don't the, tape the brother. Help him. Don't tape them. Sit and keep saying, yo, get off him. Get off him. Man, listen, go push the fucking cop, yo. You might have to take that L. You might have to get maced. You might have to get fucking hit with a baton. You might have to get shot. Whatever. Yeah. I don't fucking know. It's, it's just, it got to come a point in time where, where human compassion and human empathy has to take over, bro. I understand the fear. I totally fucking get it. I understand why you're terrified. I totally fucking get it. But guess what? Eventually, it's going to be your turn anyway. Based off what I'm seeing. Because if they're allowed to do that and get away with that in Minneapolis, what's going to happen in the next city? What's going to happen in the next state? Yeah. 
We've seen this a million times already. Like this, like how many more times are we gonna witness this shit? You understand? Yeah. I don't know, bro. Yeah. I don't I don't know what you expect from people. I really don't. I really don't know what this country, what these police officers, what these white supremacists, I don't know what they expect from people. That's why I'm encouraging all my brothers and sisters to go out there and practice your Second Amendment rights. Go out there and buy as many legal firearms as you possibly can. You know what I'm saying? And learn how to shoot. And by the way, I'll tell you all something else. All you rich, privileged motherfuckers, black or white, you better be spending some money on security inside in front of your homes. In front of those gated communities, you better be spending money on your guns and whatnot, because all of those hungry people that you ignoring, all of these hungry people that you acting like that ain't your problem. Oh, that's going to be your problem in a minute. Mm. They're going to be at your front door. You know why? Because that's where the food at. Mm. That's where the food at. And when 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 those, when when it's a when it's a food shortage in America and they can't get food at the grocery store and they t- they tired of standing in these long motherfucking lines. Guess where they coming? Yours. They come in right into your neighborhood. Mm. I've heard, I've, I've heard tons of, you know, people that I know that are privileged and rich who I love and respect have told me all types of stories about people riding through their neighborhoods lately. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And they don't know why those people are here, why those Bro, folks are there. What do I they, do? Yeah, but I mean, like, what do they always say? Like with nature, right? It's like the polar bears come down to the to the town where there's no food up in the mountain. That's you know right. what I mean? The sharks come to the shore when there's no fish in the sea. You know, it's like people need to eat. They're not just going to sit there and die. They're going to take your food before they go and just not feed their family. I get it. I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised. I get it. Mm. I don't let's, know, man. Let's pay a bill, man. Let's pay a let's bill. Pay some bills. Um, guys, get your dicks hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no nah, but for real man you need a hard dick especially during quarantine you might be coming out of quarantine um the hardest dicks are delivered by blue chew simple as that same active ingredients that's in cialis viagra it is a guaranteed great time for you and your loved one okay ladies if you listen right now you need some blue chew in your life okay give it to your man and let him stroke you down for these final couple weeks of quarantine because you guys might be out you guys might not even have sex anymore you might be so excited to be out of the house you might not be doing any fucking at all so get that dick while you can and you want to make sure you get that blue chew dick and by the way blue chew kicks in twice as fast as any of the competitors because you're chewing that shit up. You're not swallowing it, just leaving your stomach to wait to digest. You're chewing that shit up, getting it right into the bloodstream and getting that dick where it's supposed to go. Bluechew.com, I'm telling you, this is the game changer. Al said it made his dick grow a quarter inch. I can't guarantee that, but maybe that really? happens with you too. Yes, bluechew.com, okay? Use the promo code IDIOTS and you know what? You're going to get it for free. Use our promo code IDIOTS. You're going to get it for free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping, but that's free hard dick delivered right to your door. Where are you going to find a better deal than that? Free hard dick delivered right to your store. That's right. You're not going to find a better deal than that anywhere else. Blue Chew, the better, cheaper, faster choice, and we thank them for sponsoring the Brilliant Idiots. Now, let's get back to it, Charlotte. What you thinking? As far as what? Um... As far as deep dive or as far as maybe doing some asking idiots, Shit, do you I want to describe Taylor's body some more? How would you like to finish this episode up? I think that was a deep dive. Mm. Um, shit you won't care about next week, man. I don't care about shit this week <laughs> other than the stuff that we've discussed. Yo. <laughs> and then I will be caring about that next week. It is you know? true, man. It I know the NBA is coming back. Is that a fact? Um, I don't know if it's a fact, but they've already started practicing um, Mm -hmm. and they're scouting out uh, Orlando, I believe. I think Orlando for the East Coast uh, and I think uh, West Coast, maybe Vegas. Vegas. Yeah. And then Um, I think that uh, they're saying how they want to get right to the playoffs. I don't think they should do that. Um, I think it was only like, if I'm not mistaken, 20 something games left anyway. Yeah, maybe less. Maybe less. Something like that. But few. 12 or some shit. Yeah. Let all the teams play those. Right. Okay. For one reason and one reason only. Okay. To get everybody back in game shape. Yeah. And then. I don't want to see no fat fucking playoffs, bro. Yeah. And then there's no asterisks too. 
There's no asterisks. Word right? up. If you let everybody play the rest of the games, then you can't say that this season, obviously it changed a little bit, but you really can't say that this season was like a shortened season or whatever they said about the Rockets. And you, it doesn't have as much of an asterisk. All right. If we want to do fact, it, just. Yo, low key, you've had extra time to let your body heal. If anything, you have an advantage. Yeah, but they ain't been eating right. That's on them, yo. Your athlete yeah. is supposed to eat right all year round. A lot of Taylor diets in the NBA oh, over the past shit. Week, I, did oh, I say that? Shit. I didn't say that. Liberty, liberty, liberty. <laughs> 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 yo. yo. Who do you I think gained more weight during the quarantine? Taylor or Zion Williamson? <laughs> yo. <laughs> Zion Williamson. He plays for uh, New Orleans. <laughs> Bro, all I'm saying is use those... Weight. Use those last twenty games of the season to get back in shape. Mm -hmm. Don't have don't have no uh, audience attendance. You know what I'm saying? It'll yeah. be like a WNBA game, <laughs> and just freaking just go, baby. So just rock out. I think it's great. I think they gotta do it. We need some distraction too, man. I mean, just give us some sports, something to fucking talk about. Like as great sports. as the last dance was, we we need live shit that we can all comment on in real time. It brings us all together. We connect on it. You call your boys. You debate shit. I mean, I had one of my boys text me yesterday. He goes, bro, you got to watch Love Island UK. I'm like, we need sports back immediately. Hell this yeah. is a problem. All right. If that's what we're working on, if that's what the group chat is about. Yeah. <laughs> come on, dog. Watching sports is a form of self-care, man. That, that's the other thing I want to tell everybody before we get an asking idiot man i just want to tell everybody yo for real take care of yourself mm. you know what i'm saying like this is a very trying time it's a very stressful time it was a trying time before you know all of this other shit happened started happening with the police you know you're already dealing with a, a nation that's on edge like i'm gonna be honest with you america if i don't see how america gets out of this year being the same old america oh, i mean you're never the same Every yeah, but I'm talking change. about like drastic changes, bro. Like it, it has to be drastic differences. Like even there when I saw be. Joe Rogan say um, him signing his hundred million dollar contract felt gross. Yeah, I I understood what he meant, even though I can't wait to feel disgusting too. But yeah. I still understood exactly what the fuck he meant. You understand yeah. what I'm saying? Like it just seems weird for the country to be on the brink of what I think is going to be probably the darkest depression ever, but things like that are still happening. And it just makes me just I, between that and a election year and, you know, the, the trauma that people experience watching all this police brutality and white supremacists killing black folks, like and black folks being impacted by coronavirus. I don't see how America doesn't realize it's not going to win until it does right by black people. I know that probably, I know I'm biased, yeah, I think you might be a little biased. <laughs> I think America I <laughs> has probably looked at their track record and gone, you know what? We've done pretty good not being good to black people so far. I think we're no, going to figure it a out. Certain, a certain section of America, a certain population. Like I always say, America works for the people that it was designed to work for. Right? And then the trickle down ha just so happens to be better than anywhere else in the world. But there is no trickle down for black people. We say that, but his history shows yes. there's no trickle down for black folks. That being said, you'd rather be black in America than black in like war torn uh, Africa, in a war torn African country, you know, in like the Congo somewhere. You'd I mean, rather be black in America being a multi million dollar radio show host and multi and multimedia personality than you would being a soldier in a war over, you know, yeah, fucking diamonds I, I, or whatever it is. I get what you're saying, but that's just me, right? That's one. You go down to these projects in Chicago, these projects in Newark, New Jersey. Mm -hmm. you know, in, a, in a few months, the projects were already bad, right? In a few months, you might drive through Patterson and think you're in a third world country for real. I'm not saying there aren't bad parts of America. I'm just saying like you do a disservice. A lot of bad parts. A lot of bad parts, but you it's kind of low-key disrespectful to compare our poverty to other to like third world poverty, you know, and now, like, right. 
Where, because because we're right, show it's we're literally right there. I and, think and I, want, and, I think people have a hard time understanding like how poor it gets out there. And the only reason I have perspective on this is from talking to Akash and him going to India and him telling me and explaining to me like what like you literally see people like starving to death on the street. You see kids starving to death on the street, and it's like once you see that, to, to, what he said to me was it really puts in perspective like American poverty and our idea part that that doesn't mean that we shouldn't feel bad for the american poor because everything's relative and contextual to what you know but if we're comparing it to the world isn't it worse though what's that if you are living in america and you and, and you can't afford a meal in the so-called greatest country on earth when you don't have a place to stay like, isn't it worse because it's one thing when you're in a country yeah. like that because yeah, you, you you know that that's what that's what the world is. But yeah. when you live in a country that you could literally walk, you could make that you could, be, you could be you could be that poor person and walk through a neighborhood and see motherfuckers throwing food away. Yeah, <laughs> like, no, like, you, like, yeah. Like, like, like literally throwing it away. Like here, like like that shit got to be even more of a mindfuck. I think you could make that argument. I would just say that there is also rich people there as well. So like the relative poverty is more extreme than it is here. So it's like American poor is here and then American rich is here. In India, Indian rich is still here, right? They got billionaires in India, but the poor is here, you know? But again, we shouldn't have a conversation. America's convers like that, though, Schultz. The, 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 it, it, the wealth you, gap you between the rich and the poor is very bad, but bro. You but can't, you can't compare it to third world wealth gaps. Like, you can't compare it. Oh, uh, can you? I'm not I, sure I, about I guarantee that. you, man, you, you can't. It's just, it's so, so that, extreme, dog. We're talking about, like... Think about it. We can support kids for 10 cents a day. Like you can call up a number and then give them 10 that's cents bullshit. a day. You don't think that that's true? How, <laughs> who's writing no. them letters? Them <laughs> <laughs> Hell no, I don't believe that. I've never believed that. <laughs> I think we have a warped uh, opinion, but I agree with you, man. I think everything's relative. You only know the poverty or the wealth that's next to you or around you, man. So it's like if people are feeling... Um, you know, completely broke and they're completely, I don't know, like off center and like there's no hope. They they live here. They don't live in India. They don't live in these other places. That's what they feel here. So they're right to feel that way, man. It could get like, well, crazy out there. I'm 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 trying to find a statistic. It's that statistic that talks about the richest billionaires in the world. Like it's like, hold on, the five richest Americans. Well, maybe Chris, you could speak to it. You've spent yeah, some look, time look in the third it's, world. It's a, it's, a it's a statistic that's like the five richest men in America have more wealth than like. Hold on, let me find this. That sure, but I mean, I I understand what Andrew's saying. I mean, I the the level of poverty you see around the world, you don't really see it in America. Maybe the exception would be on some of the Native American reservations, which are closer. What's happening there closer to what you would see in some of these other places. Right. I understand. I, I totally get that. But I think the difference is if you go to some of these inner cities or you go to some of these rural areas down south and you see these people that are really poor and really disenfranchised, it's easy to tell those folks, oh, man, go get a job and you'll be able to eat. Or, you know, you know, you don't you know, you don't you, you can find a way to get a meal. A lot of times, man, it ain't that easy and when you live in a country where literally you can go to the next town over and it's people really living high off the hog to me that's when the violence starts right it's in your face yeah that's when the violence starts in a real different kind of way so that's that's all i'm saying and and i think you know with this whole coronavirus pandemic and i think i read a statistic yesterday that said the unemployment rate is about to be like six times higher than it was previously I think just in the black community, my God, how close are we to some of these projects that were already fucked up being third world countries, third world country type? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just dude. saying, I don't know. I mean, no I, bueno. I, I, it's, it's not out the realm of my imagination that that couldn't happen. It's no bueno. It is no bueno. If Trump, if Trump wins, he's really in the situation to earn his keep because if he's the guy that can turn the economy around and all this shit that he's been talking, it's like, all right, motherfucker, put your money where your mouth is. And if it's not him, if it's Biden and Kamala or Biden, whoever he chooses, um, they're going to need to do that as well. And to be honest, they're going to need to do that for the entire country. You know, it's, a, it's there's going to be a, yes. a huge 
there's going to be a huge, huge burden on them to yes. fix what was broken, man. It's going to be a tough starting, one. Starting, I'm being biased, uh, but starting with black people. Really, it's, it's poor people. But, you know, I just think I, listen, I just think that this presidential election, whichever way it goes, it's going to change America forever. And it's going to change politics forever. And I think a lot of different groups are, you know, you know, re recognizing the power of their vote. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think either way it goes, politicians are going to wake up and start realizing they need to stop. They need to start taking black. They need to stop taking black votes for granted. Mm -hmm. And I also think that real change is going to start happening in the black community because attention is finally going to start getting paid to the black community. And I think these administrations on you know, either side are going to start making some real economic investments in the black community. And I truly honestly feel that's where it starts because I feel like slavery was America's original sin that they have not atoned for. Well, here's an interesting, here's an interesting point. Maybe some positive, uh, leave you off on something positive for the black community and not only the black mm -hmm. community, but poor people in general. Um, poor people have figured out how to be poor and they figured out how to thrive within their limited means and you've seen this within the black community like the idea of soul food right is like taking these undesired parts of the animal that the people i guess the white people back then weren't going to use and then turning them into a cuisine that was incredibly desired right so mm -hmm. if we enter a time where much more people a much larger percentage of americans are poor who has the advantage? The oh, person who's, that. The person oh, who's yeah. brand new to being poor and don't know how it works or the people who have been there before, right? And I, listen, That's I agree with you. That's a come up opportunity that, right there. No, I said that months ago before we even got up out of the studio. I said, yo, when shit hits the fan, if, you, if, you, if, you, if you're used to being poor, are you used you to not having this. a lot? You got this. And it's your opportunity to come up because it is going to be a lot of new wealth sadly that comes from all this you know all of this shit. every tragedy creates wealth every, man. every, every tragedy creates, creates wealth. wealth absolutely yeah and i think this is going to be one of those opportunities where people at the bottom really do get a chance to um maybe you know, rise rise to the top but i also feel like you know we cannot we cannot make the government both sides republican and democrats we cannot let them skirt their responsibility to the american people bro don't let them do can't. it. We can't. We cannot let them disregard their responsibility to the American people. Yes. Start making fucking demands of your elected officials. Start making demands of these people who want to be your elected officials. America owes certain communities. Right. They they, they not, not only do they owe certain communities, especially the black community, because we built this motherfucker for free. But also they promised to take care of the worst of us mm -hmm. <laughs> like like they promised to do that that is the that is one of the roles of government hold them accountable to that shit and the same way they can always bail out these motherfucking corporations bail out the goddamn communities that need it mm -hmm. simple as that I'm, I'm and i'm telling you when that motherfucker trump finesses everybody and creates an economic justice plan for black america i'm not even going to read it i am but fuck all that. When I first, when I see it initially, I'm going to say, I told you so. But and if it's a, good, are you going to vote? That's the question. If it's better than Biden's plan, are you going to vote? If it's better for your here's people. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The difference between Trump and Biden, all we're asking of Biden is a policy commitment because that's all he can give. Mm -hmm. Trump, you the fucking president. I don't want no policy commitment from you. I want this push through, baby, whatever the fuck it is, whatever you present or whatever the, you know, the people are, because you made Tim Scott the head of your black outreach, whatever those brothers and sisters are working on for the, for the, for the, for the, for the, for the black community, push that shit through. Same way you push that shit through for these corporations. We're not asking for policy commitments from you. All right. You got the dick. You got the blue chew. Biden's trying to get the blue chew. Your shit is hard. what you say? Hard dick at your door. All right. That's what Trump can give us now. Knock, knock. Who is it? Hard dick. Can I come in? Yes. All right. I don't even know what the fuck I just said. <laughs> Speaking of hard All right. Dick. Ask an idiot. Let's Wait, go. What do we got? Hold on. Y'all don't want to talk about Doja Cat, Azalea Banks, accusing Dave Chappelle? Nah. I don't. Let's ask an idiot. Let's talk to the people. I really man. don't. Yeah. Let's talk to the people. <laughs> let's talk to the people, yo. We let the teenagers adult. take care of the Doja Cat shit. <laughs> 
Everything you said does not sound like something an adult should be discussing. <laughs> go, 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 go. Okay. What do we got? What do we got? So, um, Kanda Syro, he says if Trump implements... Oh, well, you just answered that, so never mind. Um, what will you miss most What was about, the question? It was saying if Trump implements a black agenda with police reform <laughs> as a major part of the agenda, would you vote for him? Well, listen, it's not... Uh, oh, one more thing about that. It's not about whether I would vote for him or not. If... He does that. If he implements that now because he has the power to do it, I am sure that it will be some black people who will vote for him. I don't think I would be one of them, right? But, but if you're I'm voting sure your interests and his plan suits your interests better than yeah. anybody else, yeah. according to you, that you gotta, is you what black interest. people should do, right? You got to vote your interests. So... Hey, you guys. So you guys have made your bed. You have to lay in it. So? If the person who's willing to supply that bed happens to be Trump, if if the black agenda is to do what's best for black people and the Republicans satisfy the Trump Republicans satisfy that agenda better than the Democrats, are you willing to hold yourself to your word and your commitment to black people by going with them? Well, I would tell Trump to pass that, pass it. If he passes it, hypothetically speaking, he gets it passed through Let's Congress. Let's see what happens. Pass it. Sounds like you backing up on your word, bro. No, Sounds like you're not really no, about saying, black I'm, people. You about I'm, them I'm, Democrats. I'm, 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 I'm saying pass it and let's see what happens. I'm just not. I, I'm not committing to either side. Like, but let's, you let's are saying it. if the Democrats just bring up a bill, you're willing to support it. But if Trump passes it, you still might not. No, I think that. I expect more from Trump because he's the president. All Joe Biden can do is make a policy commitment. I'm saying that in order for me to even be in that position where I would be questioning myself, right? And like, oh my God, am I going to be at the, do I have to vote for Donald Trump? For me to even be at that point, it would have to be some amazing shit that is actually already passed. Not, I promise. You understand what I'm saying? Fuck a uh, promise. This would have to happen. Okay. That's all. Okay. Next question. Next okay. question. Uh, Let's go, Young Liberty. Third, <laughs> I cannot. Third leg, Fred said, what will you miss most about quarantine life? What will we miss most about quarantine life? Um, hmm, that's a good question. Honestly, I've enjoyed like watching movies tv shows with my girl like having a lot of home cooked meals like i didn't get to do a lot of this stuff when i was on the road all the time and cooking up all this content so i've liked the ability to just kind of sit back relax and like enjoy things instead of feeling like i was running 100 miles per hour every single week trying to get everything done so it's been nice to kind of yeah indulge it's been nice to indulge and i've done yeah that. I will miss um, not having any parental paranoia. Ah, Parental paranoia is one of the worst forms of anxiety when your kids are away at school or, you know, you drop them off at cheerleading, cheerleading practice or, you know, they want to go to their friends' houses. Like all of that shit makes a parent extremely paranoid. It brings on a level of anxiety that, you know, I, I just have not had over the past few months and it feels great. I wake up in the morning. I know where all the kids are. I know what time their class schedules are. I know what they're doing. You know what I'm saying? The only place we're going is the backyard and the front yard. I love it. So I will absolutely <laughs> miss, uh, you know, the, the not having parental paranoia. Mm. Okay. What else, Young Liberty Bell? Um, <laughs> Alex. Uh, Ka Kamboris. He wants to know: Do you think coronavirus would be as big if this big of a story if there's no social media? Yeah, I think it might be a bigger story actually if there's no social media because it could just be as big as the media wanted it to be. Like back in the day before social media, the news was the news and that shit was the truth, and we, we couldn't push back about that at all. And whatever they Word. want to say, Matt, yo, back in the day, we would have been locked up for six months and nobody even left the house. I think yeah, if they I wanted to do that with us, because the only information we would get was from the news. And if they were like, yo, if you meet someone, you get it, you die. We will believe it. If it wasn't for social media, coronavirus would we, we would we'd have had it under control already in America. Ooh. I think social media causes more hysteria. And I think that, you know, when you get all of this different information, you know, 
oh, it could be a hoax. Oh, it's not a hoax. Uh, I read some shit the other day. They was like, if you have coronavirus for 11 days, after 11 days, it can't be spread. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, you know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. just all of this different information yeah. that makes you, that makes you not respect the information you're actually getting from We're the confused. news. confused. Yeah. We're actually confused. Yeah, yeah, and when yeah. you're confused, you're paralyzed. What yeah. I realized when you're confused, you're either paralyzed or you lean in really hard to one direction, right? So most of us, are, most of us are sitting in the middle like, I really don't know if this shit is real, if it's fake. I don't know what the fuck's going on. And then the extremes are like, it's a hoax, or the extremes are like, it kills everybody. Exactly. So there's really nobody who actually knows what's going on. No. It's and scary. It's easy, it's easy to feel comfortable defying all the rules when you have people on social media defying the rules. Facts. When they're showing you that they're going out, when they're showing you that they don't have a fucking mask on, you know what I mean? Even the president, you know what I mean? When they show you not having the mask on, when they just out and about living their life like it's golden, when you're hearing shit like, oh, the heat kills it. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Oh, herd yeah, immunity. Yeah. When you're hearing all of this shit, you're like, man, fuck it. Social media makes you say, fuck it. Facts. I saw that video of them wilding in Camden, New Jersey Let's last go. night. And I was like, Let's yo. go. <laughs> I DJ'd that party, bro. That shit was lit, man. I was there last night playing all the Doja Cat. Give me, give me, give us <laughs> two more asking idiots, Taylor. Okay. Um, this one's from Tio Frio. He wants to know: is there any retort that Uncle Charlotte used to preach but no longer believes? Ooh. Any retort? Retort. Like, I guess retort. I, thought I retort don't think he knows what the word retort. Exactly. I don't think that he knows what the word retort means, but <laughs> is there anything you used to preach but you no longer do? Um, Man. I mean, it's probably a lot of things if I sit down and think about it. Um, off the top is uh, uh, I've been violating my not talking to niggas after 5 p.m. rule. Ah. <laughs> only because these niggas need to be talked to because these niggas is crazy mm. <laughs> and um, mm. you have to give them some information after 5 p.m. because if you don't they will go fucking insane mm. um, but uh, I have to learn how to disconnect again so in order to learn how to disconnect you just really have to really not talk to niggas after 5 p.m. Niggas, niggas of all races by the way. Social media, social media makes that very hard to do. But I'm going to tell you something, man. And I really mean this. I don't care about anything said on social media anymore if it's not true. And if it is true. Congratulations. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Meaning that if it is true, I don't hey, know. What you're saying salute. That. <laughs> uh, you, you, you figured it out. You cracked the code. Yeah. If it's a lie, I don't give a fuck. We have to really stop giving that type of shit energy because you're never going to. These people are never going to admit they're wrong. If somebody mm. gets on social media right now and says something fucked up about you, shows or says something that is absolutely untrue, if you correct them. They're going to still think you fucking lying. Yeah. They're going to still say you don't know what the fuck you're talking about. Yeah. They might tell you that. They might get on social media right now and say you got a bump on your dick. You're like, I don't got no bump on my dick. You might even post your dick on social media and show that there's no bump. Guess what yeah. they'll say? Photoshop. Oh, shit. Yeah. So I who mean, gives a fuck what they're talking about? Technically, it's not a bump. It was an ingrown hair. And... Uh, <laughs> I got that taken care of, Charlemagne. So thanks for bringing that up to everybody on the fucking podcast. I think that was really unnecessary. Matter of fact, I popped one blue chew and that hair just shot right out of my fucking dick. <laughs> 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 it popped off like an Incredible Hulk shirt. Just <laughs> like a button off the Hulk shirt. Just <laughs> poof. <laughs> Listen, but now right, I, um, last one or, you, or that was the last no, one? No, I got one more. I, I have, I, I, yeah, I, I'm sure I've unlearned a lot of stuff, man. I, I, I'm sure I have. I just can't think anything right now. Taylor Gang, give us one more. Let's get the fuck out of here. Make it a good one, Taylor. Young Liberty Bell. Uh, okay. You got um, this. Damn, I lost the person that said it, but someone asked, would Andrew make a good drug dealer? Would I make a good drug dealer? Well, I've dealt drugs before. You have? I have. I was a drug dealer while I lived in Barcelona, Spain. Uh, I was living in Barcelona, Spain. And uh, with a couple friends, we purchased half a pound of marijuana. You might know that as weed. <laughs> and um, we sold the half a pound of marijuana and we made 11 euros total between the three of us. <laughs> so that comes out to about $4 each. So we made about $4 off the half a pound of weed. So that was my drug dealing. 
Okay. Well, well, well that story no, 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 answers no, 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 your question. No, 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 no. <laughs> I'm just saying, you guys okay, wanted to so, know the extent of my drug dealing. So, Weed you know? ain't your thing, though. You would kill with the oxys, baby. You think oxy would be my thing? Yeah, you would kill with the prescription drugs. Okay, that's you what kill. I got to do. You'd be, the, you'd, be the, you'd be the biggest drug dealer on the college scene, baby. Ooh, see, I messed up. <laughs> I was selling exactly. weed in a country where l- weed was pretty much legal. It was Get a very mind. bad business plan. <laughs> it was a horrible Why? business plan. Yeah. Why? Nobody wants to buy weed from you unless you're growing it. Now, if you were growing it and you was growing like that new shit, they'd be calling you like the scientist. Remember that white basketball player that used to play for the A1? The professor. The professor? Yeah. That's what they would be calling you. Yo, you got to go see the professor. Yo, he'd be cooking up that shit. Oh, shit. Maybe I should get into drug dealing, guys. Well, they don't open this country back up and you don't get back on that road soon. You might have to. I might have to steal some drugs, yo. (laughs) Wait, last one. Oh, shit. I'm going to do it, guys. (laughs) I'm going to deal some cocaine. From Lindo, she wants to know both your sides on how to approach protests or basically, you know, injustice. How to approach protests. Um, Charlemagne, why don't you handle (laughs) this one, bro? Basically, do you think protests work? What's her name? Her name is what? Lindo. 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 It depends what kind of protest I'm approaching. If I'm driving down the street and I see a bunch of people with Confederate flags and guns and signs that say "fuck you, niggers," I'm not approaching that protest at all. Okay. Yeah. Um, but if it's you're the talking black about lot, like uh, protests for the police, for instance, this one person said, "What do protests and marching really change at the end of the day?" Ah, right? they raise awareness where aware awareness needs to be raised. Um, I do agree. That I think we're past the point of uh, all the talking and all the marching and shit like that. I think that the only way, um, you know, respect is going to happen is if we demand it. And, you know, some people right. in this country only respect two things, and that's money and violence. So you got to hit people in their pockets or you got to react with violence. You know what I mean? So I, um, I, I think that the only point of protest is to raise awareness, you know, because it's a lot of things that go unseen in this country. It's a lot of things that go unheard in this country. You know, just because you see it on social media, that don't mean nothing. That's one out of thousands, hundreds of thousands. You know what I mean? So sometimes you need people to go to these places and raise holy hell in order to raise awareness so the proper attention can be bought, you know, bought to things. Yeah, so I, I think that I makes think, sense. Yeah, I, think I, think I think you think just, I think you got to show civic unrest because you can't let the powers that be get comfortable when they break their laws word right because once they feel like they can get away with some shit they're gonna keep on doing it they're no different than us so every time they try some fuck shit you gotta be grateful for the people that come out and they get whipped it like if they try to take away your guns you might not be one of these crazy militia motherfuckers but you gotta be grateful for these white and black militias that go out there with their fucking machine guns right in front of Capitol Hill and go we're not we're not lead, we're not at all giving up our guns it's not gonna happen because they right. kind of maintain our rights the rest of us just go to work and go ah we'll figure that shit out so I don't know I'm grateful for the people that just go out there and protest for the rights that we're supposed to have and 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 to your point, Sometimes civil unrest shows people that it's a problem. Right? I guess that's the same thing as raising awareness. Because if, yep. you, if you go outside a corporation all day and it's thousands of you protesting against this corporation, eventually somebody in that room has to say, holy shit, I think we got a real problem. Like you might can, you might can, uh, you know, dismiss a few tweets like, ah, oh, they complaining on social media or whatever. But boy, when you actually physically form like Voltron and y'all outside of someplace. Mm. Wow. That's a different ball game. Yeah, I don't man. know what this stat means. Um, but it says the U.S. has the second highest rate of poverty among rich countries. Yeah. I mean, that's like saying, you know, you got the smallest dick amongst black guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Most I everybody know. else is like, no, I'll take that dick. Whoa. <laughs> All right. Okay, show right, Let's progressive, leave it. Progressive listen, show team. Listen, listen, guys. Nothing wrong with a little oh. black dick. <laughs> Literally, a little black dick. There's nothing wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying, Charlotte, this which one you want? You want a little black dick or a big Asian dick? What's a big Asian dick, though? <laughs> do, you, do you hear the question? <laughs> do you hear the question Taylor heard, just asked? Taylor just went, 
What's a big Asian dick? Like it's something that didn't exist. And I want to Google, but I don't know. I, I think everything I got is hacked now. So I don't want to Google <laughs> big Asian dicks. And then the people that are spying on me see this shit. I'm like, this guy is weird. All right. This guy, Google, <laughs> this guy, this oh, guy's search yeah. history is Pornhub, old oh. granny porn and big Asian dick. A- I'm about to look this up guy. big I'm Asian dicks, yo. <laughs> I need to see them big Asian dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Big Asian dicks. What was the point of that? Bro, Listen, as on, always. Dog. Come on, as dog. Always, you haven't seen it. Podcast. Yo, Taylor's upset with the size. Yeah, but they could shoot a Hadouken out. That's the cool <laughs> thing about it. What's the size? It's What's the size? Like, What's the average What's the size? size? It's the average size of a black man. Let me see it. it seems. Oh, man. Asia. I might care about I black know, people right I now. Know. I'm saying the Asian dick is the Yo, size the of idea man. of average, the idea that. that Taylor has for average is astonishing to what me. What did she put? I mean, they're just these massive Asian massive. dicks. Also, it's all gay porn. I don't know why big Asian dick only gay porn comes up, <laughs> but they're massive Asian dicks. Those are some huge Asian dicks. Like, what do you mean massive, up. Taylor? What do you mean massive? They're not massive. This is not massive. And it's all about the angles, too. That's probably why you think it's it. It's bigger than his whole face. No, it's not. On a scale of one it's to that It's bigger than his whole entire face. On a scale of the one to the big black guy Saiyan, sitting, to be honest with you, Taylor. On a scale of one to the big black guy sitting on the bed with his dick just hanging there. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. How, That's how not a dick. They? That guy's got. That guy's not a dick. That's something That's else. That's That's what Snuffleupagus <laughs> looks like when he goes home and takes his costume Snuffleupagus. off. <laughs> I think that could be like a twin. You know, like when you have the twin connected to you. He got a side piece dick. Yeah, like I don't think it's a dick. I think that's his brother, dog. Like literally, <laughs> that's his brother dick. that never grew Yo. the full hot, like length. Or, something's Yo. off with that, dog. That guy's dick is too magnificent, bro. That's a magnificent dick. You know what they call that's that? A magnificent dick, dude. I don't no. know what to tell you. You know what they call that? What's that? Blessed. What? Okay, that was gay. What did he say? <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't hear him. What did he say? I don't know. Oh, blessed. Oh, blessed. Bless. I thought he said mess. I thought he said meth. What? Oh, I he said know. blessed. Blessed. <laughs> <laughs> I thought y'all was just disgusted at how no, gay that came out. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so, that dick was huge, bro. I, I, Dude, I don't know, bro. I really don't know. Like, after he eats, does he have to burp his dick, bro? <laughs> oh, my God, man. <laughs> Real talk, you got to throw that shit shit over his fucking shoulder it's heavy it's probably weighs more than this what his dick bro that shit was huge dude that's that why taylor massive. put on that weight she been talking to him via dm she was like yo when you get he out this quarantine died. me and you're gonna go at it you think you could handle that yeah you that's think you can handle that extra that guy's dick the super big black guy <laughs> yes i don't that's think most funny. potholes could handle that guy's dick. <laughs> All right, listen. Deontay Wilder, Deontay Wilder decided to gain a little extra weight for the Tyson Fury fight. It didn't go his way, Taylor. Okay, yes. so don't think just because you gained a little bit of weight. There's going to help you out. That's that a good point. you can handle Big Papa Pump. I probably wouldn't be able to. Um, no, you wouldn't be able to handle that. It's like a horse's dick. That guy? Yeah. I think it's bigger than a horse's dick. And that's with no blood in it. That shit was just hanging, chilling. That was just flaccid. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Dick he talk. He, he didn't even hold his sign it's up like, for the protest. Yeah. That shit. <laughs> no, <laughs> real protest didn't even start That shit yet. was bigger than this. And he wasn't even Salt Bay. He was like all the way excited. <laughs> I, Better be anyway. careful what you ask for, goddamn Taylor. Real talk, dude. No, I don't want it. I don't want it. I'm, I'm fine with the dick I have. Charlamagne, <laughs> this right here. That's me, baby. <laughs> no, it's not. That's me, baby. Stop lying, dog. <laughs> what it do, baby? <laughs> That's me, baby. Yes, That's you right. That salt shaker, baby. You that ain't got no three potatoes, bro. That's that goddamn pepper. That's that goddamn pepper seed. You could three potato, bro. Put some parmesan on that on that salad, baby. <laughs> 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 That's me, what? baby. What are you talking about? <laughs> so, what are you even talking about, Parmesan on a salad, son? What are you talking about? You never about? been to Boy in LA when they do the Parmesan? That's see, that's how you got to talk to these ladies. You got to tell you, listen, when you go home to your girl. 
and you know y'all get into the mood. Yeah. And she start going down there. Be like, yo, put a little parmesan on that salad, baby. <laughs> she be like, what? Put a little parmesan on that salad, baby. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's me, baby. <laughs> that's right. That's me, Taylor, baby. Go home and tell your man later, Taylor. Be like, yo, let me put a little parmesan on that salad, baby. Baby. And you got to say baby like that, too. <laughs> baby. baby. <Yeah. laughs> Listen, as always, if you listen to this podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. If you listen to this podcast and you think we're just a couple idiots who don't know shit, you're right, too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Facts. Peace. Peace.